Hello and welcome to Asunder. So glad that you're here this evening. Uh, we have a great show for you coming up tonight. And uh, I just want to tell you all a little bit about the world of Asunder before we get started. So Asunder is a dark tabletop RPG. It's set in a dying world without metal. And to survive, the divine essence inside humans has allowed for them to alter art alter their world and reshape the plants and insects into living weapons. The world has begun to devour itself. The dead infected by fungi have begun to rise. Plagues sweep the jungles and chaos shards burst from beneath the surface of the land. Players take on the role of seekers who've seen the signs of the end despite the fact others turn a blind eye in their selfish pursuits of power. Our boy Adam Lawson of Tabletop fame, he created this world and game mechanics were built by Brian Engard of Fade Core and Rob Schwab of 5e and the asunder kickstarter campaign is going to go live on november 17th there's going to be two source books two sets of epic minis a novel a keeper screen i've got images of these things for you let me grab them for you pull them up so you can see what i am talking about here oh oh yes there they are <laughs> And um, let's see, you can find the link below. If you want to be notified when the campaign goes live, you can go to bit.ly slash Asunder RPG. There's a link below if you're watching on YouTube and we'll put it there in Twitch as well. There should be a panel down there. And if you want to get a look at the Seeker's Guide source book and maybe even craft a character for yourself, there is a quick start guide available as well. And the link is below if you're watching on YouTube or it's bit.ly slash Asunder underscore QSG for quick start guide. All right, and uh, we're gonna be doing a giveaway once again this week. And let me see, ooh, we have these delicious minis that are part of the campaign to show you. There is Sky City and New Gaia, and uh, you can see the people from the Black Isle and Picari, and of course the seafarers there each have minis represented. Yes, and then sort of the foes uh, against the people of Asunder. <laughs> And here is our giveaways from Dragonburn Designs that we're going to be giving away uh, one of these beautiful items each week of our show. And tonight we're giving away this adorable little dice tower. You can see two of them pictured there. Uh -oh. oh, front and back uh, that are sort of castle themed, made of wood. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be in the midpoint of our show. We'll be doing that giveaway. Without further ado, uh, um, actually, I want to play for you a quick video, and then our keeper, Amy, will reintroduce you to the world of Asunder. So sit tight and enjoy. Broken. Broken by the gods who gave it life and abandoned it. We have been left to fend for ourselves, our divine essence bonding with the plants, which we reshaped into weapons, bonding with the sea, which then reshaped us. Next was the insects, and then the beasts of the land. We found remnants of the gods, chaos, the power to transform reality. But it was not meant for us to wield. The secret societies, with both noble and selfish goals, have tried to control it. Something has changed. Gaia has awoken from her slumber, and Asunder has begun to devour itself. The Naga have betrayed the Alliance. Demons flood the Black Isle, and the dead have begun to rise. Most deny the end is coming, but we've seen the signs and cannot turn back. We are the Seekers, and we will find the answers wherever they take us. Our story can be your story. All right. The Thank world. you, Matt Mercer. <laughs> oh, oh, you're yes. welcome, Amy. Oh my God, he's there. Hi, it's Matt Mercer. <laughs> Said you're welcome, Amy. <laughs> Amy, tell us more about the world of Asunder. You got it, Becca. Y'all, Asunder. This is a game about people seeking truth, power, and belonging in a world without metal or gods. The world was broken long ago, and the gods that were once a part of this world left, and with them they took metal, the precious resource that decided who had strength and power. And without this resource, and without the balance that deities offer, the world and lands began devouring itself. 
But the gods, in their mercy, had created humans. And in that creation, the gods left behind a piece of them called essence. Though an infinitely smaller amount of essence existed in humans than in gods, humans are themselves extremely resourceful. They have learned to channel their essence and bond to different pieces of these asunder lands, characterizing the humans into dangerous categories. So yes, the land is broken, but humans have figured out how to survive as they always do in this treacherous and dangerously beautiful world they call home. Now, without that, let's meet our players who are all seekers and all have essence that have bonded with something. Beyond that, in our first episode, they all developed a moment. They, all, they, they experienced a moment in which they developed a path, which technically in game mechanics makes them no longer level zero, but level one. So I would like to hear from our seekers what their essence has bonded to and which path they took and what moment decided that path for them in the game. So first I would like to talk to Chris Wu, who is playing Pyrus, a demon hunter from the Black Isle. You're muted. Chris, mute. There we go. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, so I uh, play the role of Pyrus Olam Goddard, and um, <clears throat> uh, on the path of the survivor, I have, after having a vi glass vial shatter in my hand, showering my face with razor sharp shards, and the jagged glass digging into my hand, a wave of pain rushed through my body. In doing so, something awoke inside of me. After an agonizing lifetime of turmoil and hardship, the white hot pain of the glass provided me with the relief that I have craved for so long, numbing me to the pain tearing at my soul. Now I throw myself into battle, longing for the release of pain to comfort and shelter me from my own inner demons. That's so dark. Yeah. So you were using pain as its own shield from your actual emotions. Can, yeah. Can relate. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. So you are from the Black Isle, which means what What has your essence bonded to? So my essence bonds to my body and it uh, essentially turns my body into a living weapon. And then you, because of these glass, um, these glass shards that did uh, kind of explode into your face, you are now on the path of survivor. So I I am. we'll have to see how, how that goes for you, um, Mr. Survivor. Uh, and now I want to hear from Becca Scott, our very own Becca Scott, who's playing Mira from the mainland. Are you afraid of mainlanders? We could be quite terrifying. Yeah, all well, right, maybe not. We're very, no, we're all very afraid. You know, people underestimate mainlanders because we don't have an essence that is as visible as others until it starts to corrupt you and you're completely overcome by chaos itself. But for me, I have found my way when I was taken by seafarers for seven years. That has nothing to do with who I am now, though. Who I am now is uh, someone heading down the path of a vanguard. What is a vanguard, you say? Well, that's a leader. And I myself am a natural born leader. No, I'm not the fastest or the strongest or the smartest or the wisest or the, there's a lot of things I'm not, but what I am is a leader. And there was a moment in which my compatriots, a few moments in which they they rallied behind a cause that I had set them to. Uh, you'll remember, Sonia, while we were in a moment of stress, Onyx was sort of kidnapped for promising diamonds he didn't have. And, well, we delivered um, <clears throat> what was asked of us in an unconventional way that maybe involved dismembering a human gentleman and I couldn't do that alone, but with the power of my teammates and the ability to lead them, give the right eye wink at the right time, you know, uh, I realized that I, I have a little, a little something, something in that department. And again, when the beggar pud asked for a pittance and the, my friends were disgusted with, um, you know, his, his uh, ripping the head off his rodent friend, but I saw 
I saw an ally that could aid us in our mission, and I pursued that because I'm not afraid of following my own instincts. Honestly, anything that uh, can give me a thrill because I am quite a risk taker. That's, uh, that's me. That's Nira. Awesome. So what? Uh, in order to be a leader, you need really just one thing, followers, and that you do have in the form already already your your teammates but most importantly from sonia by satine phoenix played by satine phoenix from the land of picari yeah hi satine, tell us about sonia i am sonia of the crystal grass tribe in the land of picari those of us from picari are essence bonded with beasts you can always connect with beasts but in my youth i bonded with a strange creature never before seen my flying jaguar named Palm with big, massive black condor wings. This deep bond grants me Palm's feline aspects. And I have been, I found that, so I was seeking the creator of this creature. This is not a natural cre creature. And it turns out that it has something to do with chaos. And through my seeking, I found my way to Nira. And the prophecy, it's Py Pyrus's prophecy, and I will do anything in my power to protect Nira on her path. I am now her soldier. That's right. And you, your path itself is, a, is an essence bonded path. Yes. So what, what makes that a different path than what the other people have encountered? Um, so everything that I do kind of, um, there was this moment in the last game where I was just so instinctually present for what Nira wanted. I knew exactly, I could tell, I could feel it. And I think I was channeling Palm and, and her an his animal instincts. And when she gave me that look, it was just time to dismember. <laughs> Yes, very feral, yes. but also very, one thing that um, you and Palm have is an actual pretty intimate relationship, at least it began that way. And so yeah. <laughs> to target to target a human's genitals is very Palm, but it also is very Sonia. And so I think in that moment, uh, you reached out and were able to feel each other, even though you weren't even touching. Absolutely. I can, it's like we have this, extra sensory bond and communication and other people can't understand it but that's not for us but it's other like people, pure survival instinct at this point other people can see it right because you do you have got you, you've gotten a little bit of armor um from palm and and i'd love to hear what that looks like yeah so my skin is already bronze i got that big black hair that matches palm but my bronze skin actually kind of hardens so it's um, it's a little more armory, and my eyes have that. They've suddenly like had this like cat-like slits in them. Oh. And I got a few little cat fangs and extra sharp claws. Does your skin harden in the form of spots like jaguars? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, you mean like I was, like, I like, so. this? Yeah. like that? What the? Yes. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you saw that for this game. <laughs> No, this is real. That's just a, that's a satin phoenix. Oh my gosh. <laughs> who is Sonia and who is satin phoenix? Why do we never see them in the same room? <laughs> the same person. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, satin phoenix. And last but not least, the person who really got us into this mess, Onyx Obsidian, played by Jeremy Walker of Sky City. Hello, everyone. Yes. Uh... There was a lot that happened and it was during that moment that I was having with Sonia and the dancers. Um, well, I could still be having that moment, um, but something came over me. Maybe a few things, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, I couldn't shake that encounter that we had with Ray Telg and the Naga. You know, it reminded me of when I was a child with my parents before their lives were taken from me. My father told me, never give your enemy the advantage by any means necessary, he says. See, I had forgotten those words after spending the remainder of my adolescence on up to now on Sky City amongst the elite. 
See, my first kill was ordered by my grandfather, a mainlander who tried to kidnap my grandmother for ransom. I shoved a blade of glass so deep into his back it came out of his nose. My grandfather was pleased to see me in this way, but I, I, I never really wanted that for myself. See, I became a businessman. I let all the henchmen do the bidding for me. It was that moment with the Naga and the chopping off of that man's appendage for Raytelg that reminded me of how cold this world can be, even for a glass dealer like myself. It reminded me that I'm not in Sky City anymore. I'm not surrounded by my captains and foot soldiers who work for me. I'm on my own in this journey, amongst strangers who may very well stab me in the back the way I stabbed that kidnapper. I must remember the words my father whispered to me just as the demon stole his last breath when I was a child, by any means necessary. I'm leveling up to Marauder to seize the advantage over my enemies, exploit their weaknesses, and turn the tide on any opponent who thinks they may have the edge on me by any means necessary. Oh my gosh, that that's amazing. I did not know, th I did not know that part about you. Uh, uh, I don't know, words that I can remember, glass back nose. Mm. Um, Pretty, yes. pretty severe. What is your, as, as a member of Sky City or having come from Sky City, what is your essence bonded to? Blyce Crystal. Mm. I'm bonded with the Blyce Crystal. Everything in mine is Blyce Crystal. As I said last week, uh, I'm Blyced out, <laughs> including my airship, uh, which is just so fresh. Drip. So blinking. Drip, drop. <laughs> <laughs> Drip, absolutely. Um, and then you, your path. Uh, you after after seeing what can happen when you do take um, when you take matters into your own hands. That's correct. You, you've taken. Oh, I the, see what you did there. The novice path of Marauder. So right. any any of you watching, just so you know, all four novice paths are represented here. We have Marauder, Survivor. Essence bonded and Vanguard, uh, and those will all be those will all be explained to you when you get the Seeker's Guide for yourself. Uh, when you back the Kickstarter on November seventeenth, that's the first day you can do it um, for us under. So, without further ado, let's. Hit, I'm going to give you a quick recap of what happened last time, um, so you can uh, have some context as to what the, these few Seekers are um, talking about, and then. We're gonna get right into playing the game. So here is what happened. The Seekers sought a seed of Gaia, which we do have an image for. Um, this is a chaotic artifact. It's a this, this particular one is a knowledge seed that once activated should answer their questions regarding Pyrus's memory slash prophecy of cave paintings that depicted an intimidating figure surrounded by several smaller figures. The Naga, Raytel, who's basically a snake woman, dropped the crew off outside an underground black market, demanding payment for her services. Because she wanted to make a child with essence, which she did not have, her ultimate payment was an organ or a limb from a male human. All humans have essence. Nira pants the nearest guard, and Sonia, following her mainlander friend's lead, sliced off his wiener. <laughs> Ray we were yes, we were being vague until now, but not right. <laughs> we found a lot of euphemisms. A lot of euphemisms. Yes. But no, no, this man was wienerless. Ray <laughs> Telg left a happy customer, and the guards understood the strength of that message. Once inside the black market tunnel, known as the blister socket, it was clear the tunnel was alive. Yes, it was an enormous worm bondage to the Pakari Chabwub, who was the black market boss. The crew ran into an unhoused lunatic named Pud, whose essence had tainted back on Pakari when his elephant bondmate and he had encountered the black cloud. Once again, Nira took charge and insisted that he join their party, hoping that human connection could help him heal. A sort of pet of the market, Pud led the seekers straight to Chabwub. Just in time, because Chabwa was about to digest, or Chabwa's worm was about to digest some earth, 
which translated into an enormous avalanche within his giant cavity. The seekers, <laughs> the seekers raced to Chabuab Sanctuary, an enormous cyst on the worm's wall. Once safe, Onyx revealed that he has a good relationship with Chabuab, having saved the worm from a sickness once before. Chabuab said his worm is sick again and worse, and he will give the seekers the seed of Gaia that he has if they figure out a way to heal his worm. Pyrus gained Chabwob's confidence, revealing that the Red Alliance is actually nearby searching for the seed as well. Sonia's old friend, Nestretti, who ran a Kalia, a Kalia Venom distillery, which we have a, an image of her laboratories here. Nestretti corroborated the Seeker's theory that chaos nearby was causing the worm's sickness. Onyx and Sonia used threats and friendship respectively to get her to relinquish a glass bottle, a glass vial. They knew that glass might be the only way to cut through the worm's thick skin. So they broke the glass bottle, exploding it right into Pyrus's demon hunter face, but <laughs> creating sharp glass shards as improvised weapons. Nearest, nearest sense of chaos pointed them toward the area occupied by Isiok and Welkin, the brother-sister brothel owners. Sonia and Onyx were all too happy to take their business to the siblings and distract them while Nira and Pyrus used their strength to hack into the worm's walls where Nira suspected the chaos was lurking. <laughs> Bleeding profusely from the glass shards, they found a splinter of chaos. Success. Just as Chabwub arrived to inspect the seekers who were mutilating his bondmate worm, Chabwub fuming, is not alone. His guards follow him and surround Nira and Pyrus. And that is where we begin our episode. Sorry, the veil is parted and we are no longer safe in our homes in little uh, in little pixelated LED boxes. No, no, no. You, you are now encountering the boss, Chabwub, of the black market, the blister socket. And he is none too happy to have you just ripping apart his worm. And, uh, and he he shows up and he sees you, Nira, and you, Pyrus, um, hacking into the worm. And he, and he says, what, you didn't think I would feel that? My worm, Kai, and I are strictly bonded. It hurts him, it hurts me. I demand you answer what is your purpose before I kill you. I eat the shard as fast as possible. <laughs> what? I want to eat the shard. The chaos shard? Yeah. You want to swallow it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's how that's how us mainlanders get chaos. We have to swallow the shard. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So so in that action, um, let's say you you swallow it, and then Pyrus, what what do you do? Uh, uh, I turn to Chabwub and I tell him, um, we found what was ailing your worm and we have excised it. But she swallowed it. She swallowed it. She swallowed the proof. So first and <laughs> first, um, any contact with a chaos shard, even though this is a mere splinter, is going to hurt you. Chaos is not to be wielded by humans. It was one more oversight of the gods when they left. They, they, they kind of upgraded the mainlanders um, so that the mainlanders wouldn't bond with something externally. But just because you can bond with your soul, it, it just doesn't make you a god. And gods use chaos as their tool to shape the universe. So you you don't have the constitution to hold chaos, um, even though you are able to. So you must take you swallowed it. I'm gonna say you take two discord. <laughs> this does not. This does not feel good to you. Okay. So any everything that was wrong with Kai. Remember, you saw the the grime, the vile, the the weird ass acidic dirt that he was swallowing. It it um it was it was uh it was hacking up and slicing his inner cysts. The cysts themselves were gangrenous. Um, chaos did that to the worm. So you removed his sickness from what you believe and put it inside yourself. Oh. Um, so now that you have taken two discord, I'm gonna make you roll a D20 twice. Um, when you gain discord, 
you have to roll a d20 and if the number rolled is less than your new discord score we're gonna have to see if you get a chaos mutation mira so right. for the first for the first discord i'm gonna say you when, that happened when you touched it okay so roll a d20 and if you get a one or fewer we're gonna have to give you a chaos mutation it's an eight okay so that just that this just feels it feels it feels like your first when you first drink alcohol you hate it and then there there's a warmth inside you and and you don't even you don't even second guess it you want this splinter inside your body more than anything you want to feel this warmth again even though it was just for a split second so you swallow it roll a d20 again if you get now this time your discord is two so if you get a two or fewer you get a chaos mutation 14. a 14. okay no chaos mutation but one more time this i mean you could chase the dragon all day long and the dragon <laughs> The dragon will always get better. Okay, so chasing the dragon is worth it to you. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, peter off. This gets better. So this sharpness, it it actually is. It kind of rips your insides, but you feel it knit back together. Um, you 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 feel you taste blood and iron. It's really grotesque and awful. And then all of a sudden, there's this still peaceful calm, and this inner strength that you were never. You were never really given that much attention. I mean, let's face it, you're kind of a plain, a plain Jane, pretty homely. Yes, you're a vanguard, but for the most part, you kind of go by unnoticed and that suits you. Mm. When you have this chaos inside of you though, it, none of this matters. You know without a shadow of a doubt that you are better than everyone and you see the way that the web of the world, everything is connected. So you are in, in one moment injured and a puppet master. No chaos mutations yet, but that doesn't mean your body doesn't want to show it. So, the the rest i guess only pirates and, and the and these um guards chabwa anyone who's staring at you sees a flash of red from your eyes just just a blink but it's there and uh it it looks it, it just your eyes just open a little wider there it there's no pupil that all of a sudden it's just red and then you're back to normal um that's what happens to you, Pyrus. You, you notice this as well uh, in your in your seeker mate. And Chabob says, "Well, you okay? So you found the sickness. Did that require hacking and slashing into the thing that is most dear to me? It was malignant, and it was like." A surgery. We had to excise it in order to remove it. How else would you ex tell us how to pull something out of the wall of your worm? I, I did not tell you to remove anything. I told you to heal my... You can feel what your worm feels, yes? Do you feel the sickness anymore? Real quick... Real quick, he is not. I'm going to make you make a challenge, uh, a challenge roll, um, and this will be a persuasion roll because he he's not on your side at the moment, um, and I'm not sure he wants to attune to his bondmate at the moment. So go ahead and um, yeah, make a. You are using you're using a persuasion, so that'll be intellect, and we'll do that versus his will. <laughs> I rolled a two, but my intellect is one. I mean, nine, so that's minus one. Oh, you got a you got a one. Okay, um, so he I did good. You are you you man. It, things get bad if you get if you get a zero or below. Um, and remember, Chris, remind me how much damage has Pyrus taken in the uh, um, since last session. He's taken eight damage so far. Oh, and how much health do you have? Oh, well, as a survivor, I gain a lot of health. So my health is at 23. Okay. Well, then it doesn't make, 
me feel too bad when Chabob says, grab him, seize him. And two guards, two of his strongest guards, um, remember these are, these are, these are Kai guards and they are wrapped in thick vines that are almost worm-like in decoration, but they're, they're, they're thick armored guards and they're going to, they're going to seize you. I'm going to give them a Banes or sorry, a boon because there's two of them. Um, but let's, let's see if they actually do grab you or do you let them? Uh, how many guards total are there? Uh, there are, there are four total. So two of them are going to grab you. Uh, Just go with I, it. Well, in that case, no, I resist. <laughs> okay. Um, if you resist, then yes, this will be a challenge roll. So I'm going to roll a strength check, and you can choose to use your strength or agility uh, it, that, that I'm going to need to beat, okay? All right. I'm going to use strength. Okay. Um, I got a 15, and then a boon is plus four. So that's a 19. Yeah, I got a nine. You don't. You don't technically roll. You just have to. I just have to meet or beat your strength score. Oh, um, strength score is thirteen. Thirteen. So yes. So these two guys um, grab you, and in that moment, they both they both pu punch you in the gut to make you bend over. <clears throat> um, <sighs> but let's that see. Jiggles. Let's see if they, let's see if they do, and let's see if they uh, actually do some damage. Oh, or go to twenty. Of course you did. I got a twenty. Okay, but but they are so they are they are just using their fists. They they want information. They don't want to kill you. So uh, take six damage. Okay, I'm six damage. Max. Um, actually, mm -hmm. it, when they do that, can I use my new skill and or my new uh, survivor talent and exhaust the enemy or exhaust one of them? Yes, that is a triggered action. So yes, and the trigger is getting hit. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us what happens to these two guards when they hit you. Well, I can only target one, but uh, okay. you can use a triggered action to make a strength or agility attack roll against its strength. If you succeed, the enemy becomes fatigued for one minute. If it's already fatigued, it becomes impaired for one minute. If it's already fatigued and impaired, it takes 1d6 damage. Amazing. Okay, yes. Yes, then let's do it. So uh, they're, they're both the same... They're both, they both look the same, but pick left or right? Uh, left. The left guy. Okay, awesome. You kind of, you punch him back and we are in a fit of wits. I mean, strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, do, do I roll? I, I roll. I roll you against roll? your strength. Okay. Awesome. And My I'm strength rolling. is 12. My strength is 13. Uh, nope, but I got a five plus three. That's only an eight. So no, nothing. Okay. Okay, but I love it, and I want it to happen. Well, perhaps um, I use my vital advice to say, Pyrus, uh, kick a little lower. <laughs> and I can use, uh, I can add a, a boon to any challenge or attack roll because of my vital advice power that is part of my vanguard path. Yes, you can, good, okay. So you hear your friend Nira whisper some advice to you. Um, it sounds like she's asking you to target his genitals again and you, <laughs> and, and you uh, roll, roll, roll a d6 and see if that helps. Because you're at six. Eight. Ah, yeah. Okay, so you're at an eight, so that's fourteen. That definitely beats my strength. So I am not fatigued yet, but does that mean I am fatigued now? It is. You are fatigued now. Yes. Okay. So, um, this, so, I'm so sleepy. As they both grab you and they just sock it to you, you you take none of that. Um, you give them a little elbow, but nira has got a better idea, and and the elbow pulls back and. The fist moves in. Um, the elbow tried to hit the right guard, but instead you landed on the left guard with your fist right between the legs. And this, the the man buckles and he loses his hold on you. Um, he looks up. He looks up at his boss, and you see actually a, a kind of shake of his head, like uh, as as he intakes some breath through his um, through his mouth and just kind of shakes his head at Chabob, and he goes, oh, really? You don't want us to apprehend this demon hunter? You're afraid, are you? 
here we go. Onyx and Sonia, you can hear what's going on. This is, you guys are right next to it. You're in a pod having some fun. Um, but at this moment, I'm going to allow you to take an action if you want to. Oh, yeah. I definitely am channeling Palm. And I, I, is Palm outside I of the don't. pod? Well, that's up to you. That's up to you. Did, did Palm enter the pod with you? <laughs> Palm is like guarding okay, cool. the pod. Yeah, I can feel what's going on, and okay. I'm really annoyed. But um, this is really fun. But Nira's in trouble, and I have to go out. What I would like to do is basically just like jump, roll, and just use my agility to kind of, you know, cat like reel out of there and then just grab my club what? and start wailing. Oh my gosh, okay. So you're going to immediately attack um, because you sense uh, disturbance. Uh, great. Yeah, let's see if you do. Uh, so you- And I'm aiming for a head, whatever head is in front of Nira. Oh, I love it. Okay, so let's call With that- With the spike thing. I love it. Very clear. Yes, yes, yes. So I- uh, this is one of the mechanics in the game, which is you can do cool things with melee and ranged attack. Um, technically, a called shot is a ranged attack, but I love you making a called shot. You want to hit, you want to hit someone on your head, so in, or on their head. So in order to make this, I'm going to say that you take a bane, unless you have another a, a way to have a boon on this, and then it'll it'll allow you to do um, this. It'll allow you to do uh, an extra damage an extra d6 of damage. So yeah, because I want to use my beast aspect. What is what does that do? Um, that is uh, I get two perception plus two speed and one uh, d6 extra damage. Another on. okay, fantastic. So you're you're okay, because your beast is so connected with you now, you're able to actually be a little bit more efficient in battle. So you pry yourself away, as difficult as it is, from the writhing body. You are already your armor is pretty uh, scant anyway. Um, so you're able to just kind of pry open the the fleshy cyst that you're in, uh, jump out, roll out, and make an attack at the nearest guard you see, which I'm gonna say is the one of the guards that's actually holding onto Pyrus, but it'll be the right guard. Okay. So you've got one bane against this roll, um, but if you do make it, you can you can actually roll three d6 damage. Okay, so I roll the d20 and the d6 because of the bane, correct? The d20 and the d6. Okay, here we go. That is a 14 with a bane of four. So that's a 10. Um, this person's defense is really high. It's, you, don't, you don't hit, um, mm -hmm. but you look ferocious and your beast is right there at your side. Uh, this, this person, as he was holding on to Pyrus, uh, he kind of ducked maybe a little bit to help his friend, but um, other than that, you would have clocked him right in the head. Uh, Onyx, what do you want to do? Well, Onyx is super annoyed at this point um, because, like Sonia said, uh, I was, we were both having a great time. And um, I really don't want to get up, but it's like, oh, my God, where did she go? You know, and then I look over, like, oh, shit, and I see her go out of the pod. So at this point, is the pod still open from when she es like escaped out of yeah, it? Yeah, uh, if you think of the cyst, uh, I know you want to keep calling it a pod, but it or technically whatever. is a, a pimple pustule that's growing out of the mm. side of the worm. So let's call it a cyst. Let's call it what it is. It's gross, but that's what it is. And and it, if you think of it like an eye, yeah, she's kind of got it half half open like this. And so how far would you say that the guards are from? Oh, from really the close. Yeah, uh, I guess three, uh, one yard, so three feet. Okay. Well, I'd like to grab a bow, uh, a bow and an arrow, because um, I'm laying, at this point, Onyx is on his back, because <laughs> we can all just assume what's happening. Um, I don't really want to move, so um, I'm going to grab my bow, and my arrow and just 
<laughs> yes. Okay. I love this because also with with your with your weapons, you're able to kind of control gravity. So it mm -hmm. wouldn't really take much for mm -hmm. you to launch this thing and for it to go a lot farther and harder than it than it ever actually could, mm -hmm. just just because of your control of gravity. Mm -hmm. So you're on your back, um, uh, getting some business taken mm -hmm. care of, and you, yeah, you kind of you barely roll over to your side and bink. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's see if you hit. Anybody? Are you aiming for anyone specific? Uh, I'm aiming for the guard uh, that was. There's the one that's on Pyrus, right? Or my? Yeah, there's yeah. two guards on Pyrus. Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm gonna. I'm aiming for that one. For the one okay. that's on the right. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and I think as a marauder, at any time, your character's so OP. I think you can just add a boon <laughs> to, to to anything. Unless it's not, maybe the boon should just be for overall just anger at this moment for disturbing um, me. Um, right, you're extra, you're extra motivated. Yeah, for sure. To end, to end whatever is going on outside yeah. needs to be over. So whatever you're doing inside can also be over in a very satisfactory way. That's correct. That's a nat twenty. Oh, <gasps> Amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. So we're, yeah. Okay. I love that. So let's say you do one D you easily can do one D six damage. Um I I want something else. I want something uh fun to happen too. I'm gonna make I'm gonna say that when you hit this guard, um you don't actually do more damage, but but you stick him right in the kidney and he does release pirate the hold on Pyrus, which mm -hmm. actually renders Pyrus free. So roll a D six and tell me how much damage. Oh, I did. It's a five. Five. Yes. Dang. It's a solid. Hey, I'm telling you, I'm feeling Mojo is rising right now. <laughs> like, Don't worry. Mojo. I'll roll bad enough. For <laughs> oh, oh, no, I've been rolling bad enough already. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And the way it works in this game is you actually don't subtract health. You just take damage, and which is so much better. You add damage on top of each other, and then when it reaches health, the creature itself uh, is incapacitated, or uh, the creature itself dies. But if it's a player character, then the creature, uh, then the player character is just incapacitated, and has we have to see if they die. So okay, so he, he took five points of damage. And I just realized, Chris, when you attacked, you actually did do damage um, and you made him fatigued. So what was the damage that you dealt when you hit him back? Oh, I I, I didn't actually roll a damage. Oh, okay. Roll, roll a d6 real quick. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that's a six. Of course it is. Okay. So <laughs> at this point, all right. At this point, Chabon. There you go, Pyrus. Yeah. yeah Chabon <laughs> looks at all of you and goes, wait, wait, wait. Wait, this has gone too far. Leave, leave them alone. I can't. I, I have plenty of men to spare, but I can't. I, I, I've got a reputation to uphold. Are we going to battle this out or are you going to explain what's happening here? Ah, oh, yes. Right Perhaps if you hadn't brought guards with you, we would have had more of a chance to speak. Do you not feel pain now, as I have swallowed that which hurt, which hurt you and your bondmate? As, as a matter of fact, that feels a little better. Mm, because I took the pain away from you and brought it on myself. Just a bit of chaos. I'm curious as to how you acquired it. There was chaos in my worm. Kai, can you believe it? And the walls start undulating and shimmering down as Kai reacts to this. I can't believe it anymore. Who would have done such a thing? It shimmies an affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the giant, terrifying, dangerous word shimmies an affirmation. <laughs> it's... it's it's adorable. <laughs> right. And now the seed? You As per the terms of our agreement? I need you to heal my worm. And he looks at the gash in the side of his worm that you, you all created. I don't need you to leave my worm. 
injured. He has one more symptom, don't you think? Hmm. Oh, if I were to attempt a roll to heal this worm using some sort of like just first aid knowledge, would that be maybe intellect? I seem to remember you having something that you used to impress me back in my headquarter pustule. Ooh, pretty sure I'm all, all out of that. <gasps> Are you lying? Are you? Wait. I said pretty sure it was kind of an iffy statement. <laughs> so, okay, Ooh. let's see. Let's see. If, uh, so this is the this is actually a lie. I'm going to make you make a challenge roll because you are technically with the information. Um, so yeah, this well, is, that was before I realized I only have three doses of the sawgrass powder, mm -hmm. and this is a big ass worm. So I'm yeah. missing out on like a whole high, and uh, I don't need to throw away all my stuff. Maybe there's another way. Okay, so I think, I think uh, that's an in, that is an intellect attack on. I'm going to say this is an intellect attack actually on uh, Chabwub's intellect because I, I, I think he saw when you pulled. I think he saw when you pulled out the first one. So let's see what happens. So this is an intellect challenge roll versus okay. Chabwub. If, is this a new round, and perhaps I could have another triggered action? Oh, yes. Okay, what I want to do is I want to give a bane to Chubwub's roll because are we doing contested intellect rolls or am I just rolling intellect? You're rolling intellect to beat Chubwub, but I like where you're going with this. So tell me which uh, trait you're trying to use. Uh, with my, oh, well, of course I would be giving advice. And uh, with that advice, I'll, I'll tell Chubwub, uh, Mm. Are you, are you, do you need glasses? It seems you that you can't see very well. You were looking over here at, perhaps you need to get some glasses. That's my vital advice to him. Your vital advice is yeah, to Yeah, I'm just glasses. messing with his head. Yeah, uh, that is, wow. Oh God, sorry, not glasses, not in this world. You need to get some sort of seeds or leaves that you can put on your eyes yes. to help your vision. Yes, because bark, of course bark, we don't speak of glasses. Tree bark with holes in it. Yes, tree bark with holes. <laughs> Focus is what you can actually see. Oh, you think I'm sick too. I love it. Here, I'm going to roll. Yeah, let's do contested rolls. I'm going to roll intellect with a Bane. You roll intellect with a D20. Okay. Uh, so I got a 10 with a 1, so that makes my roll 9. 14. Okay. Yes! Gonna, it's because okay. I'm using the giant die. Great. So he says, oh, oh. so, well, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe because the chaos was inside my worm, maybe the chaos got into my eyes too. Mm. Well, if you're all out of sawgrass, then yes, do whatever you like, but heal my worm. And he's uh, yeah. What? So you want to you want to make an attack or make an intellect challenge roll to to heal? I just want to see if I know some general first aid. Like maybe there's a, a merchant nearby that I could give a couple slivers of pearl to for some sort of salve that uh, would would be like a first aid patch. Okay. Instead I, of my precious sawgrass powder. Okay, so go ahead and go ahead and make an in intelligence roll. I'm gonna give you a boon because there is someone on your party who has some information. Sorry, it's a very noisy dice tower, but it's very satisfying. <laughs> uh, that's 21. 21, okay. 15 so out of six, yeah. So actually, Sonia, Sonia knows the, the way that bond mates actually work. And the easiest possible way to make this happen, especially for these worms that are just walls and, and anything, would actually be to get Chabob on board. And Chabob would have to, you know, give of his essence. But it's really, it's just, uh, Chabob's like 100 yards long, size of a football field. If Chabob just gives of his essence, this tiny relatively Kai? small oh sorry yeah in, in, in kai chab if chabo gives kai the worm his essence this thing will close right up <gasps> but he would have but chabo would uh have to sacrifice so sony if you want to impart that information to chabo i do i and i would like to walk up to him and kind of like this like inspecting his face like how close are you to your beast you know wow. of 
essence strengthening. Yes, my lady, we are very close. <laughs> and his worms, his worms that are covering his body and every orifice and the little, the oh, little. I forgot about the gadgets. worms. <laughs> yeah, there are worms right. everywhere. I did not. In this, I did just not picture, forget. Satine so backs down. Is, Sonia does not back down. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is like a close up shot where the two of them are just very intertwined. There, this is very Picari of them, very mm -hmm. um, intimate. And the his face and his slimy uh, his slimy segmented body is right up next to yours. It's slimy and gooey and smooth, and the worms Look, kind of together. share your face for a little while. And he says, "Yes." We are so close. So close. Um, <laughs> pretty sure. And then um, Palm walks over to the wound and kind of does like one of those cat things and like brushes up against it. And I just kind of like lead him with my cheek over and we kind of walk over to the wound together. Okay. Yeah. He he actually just allows this. He loves he loves being close and cuddly because um, all Picari are yeah very cuddly with their bondmates, but also it seems like with each other. Um, even though you would not expect this from the worm guy, but he does, he, he lets you sidle up with him and he lets you, he lets everyone, including Palm, cuddle with Kai near the gash. And- Oh, I go a little closer. Are you cuddling too? Here? I'm just this kind of like just a, cuddles. sitting far away, but pretending <laughs> like I'm doing the cuddle motion from a far Yeah. So so he he the way this works, he he says, Oh, my swarm, yes, yes, be one. Oh, 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 oh. and you can see these like worm-like maggots kind of chomp a little bit on, on his in his, his insides um and, and as his insides and, and skin covering that kind of disappears but there's something about them consuming him that also heals that heals kai like these fibrous tissue of a human uh can also become fibrous tissue on, on of the worm and it it ceases to become metaphorical and it's real it's right in front of your eyes and he he's he's experiencing pain but it, it is he knows that it's for it's for the better and, and he at the end of it he says i'm gonna need a lie down after that <laughs> i just walked back to my friends like this is this is how it works <laughs> that was really impressive, Sonia. Well done. And As now, I swallow my vomit. <laughs> yeah, Becca, that'll be interesting to see what happens with your chaos shard inside of you. <laughs> um. <laughs> Look, I, I read somewhere, you're supposed to swallow it. He, he takes one, <laughs> oh. Great. I didn't, I didn't mean that. I really, I did in the Sunder, gotta go. It's in the book. It's in the, it's in the book. book. <laughs> um, so he takes one look at Tyrus and he says, you know, we could use someone like you on this, on this black market inside Kai. No. Thank you. I, <laughs> I've, I've had my fill of <laughs> All we need is that seed. <laughs> wow, just like that. <laughs> yes, I can take a hint. Give me one second with Kai. Yeah, you take all the time you need. Seems like he seems like we're here. Once more, Onyx, you have brought me the answer. <clears throat> what? Uh, <laughs> uh, Onyx comes out of the cyst. <laughs> hey! Whoa! How's everybody doing? What did I? What I miss? That that Pyrus, you good? The the the, the guard. He's <laughs> very good. Thank you. I like the sky. Always partaking of what the market offers. <laughs> Jab Bob, you never disappoint, my friend. You never <laughs> disappoint. Uh, Nira, whoa, what's up with you? Hmm? What? 
Oh, am I am I putting off some sort of r radiation? Uh, it's normal. It's fine. It's a it's a mainlander chaos thing. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure I did it the right way. I walked up to Pyrus and I'm just like, mm -mm. like glass out of your face. Oh, amazing! <laughs> yes. Oh, I hand it back to you. Oh, uh, Sati and Sonia, do you have do you have a way to heal your friend? I don't know if I can do this for my friend. You have a way. To I heal actually, her. I actually yeah. have a wheel to heal myself oh. that came with my survivor uh, <laughs> class. Okay, I I want to see. Yeah, let's do that. So, is that a triggered a triggered action or an action? It's both. It's an action or a triggered action. It's called yeah. shake it off. Uh, on my turn, I can heal damage equal to my healing rate, and I can do it twice for free. Oh my gosh! Okay, so I yeah, as she's as she's doing that, um, go ahead and heal yourself twice your healing rate, and your healing rate is always a quarter of what your health actually is. So, Pyrus, how how much is your healing rate? Healing rate is five, so that means I would heal ten, bringing my damage down to four. Oh, okay. Awesome. Fantastic. So you just healed 10. So you were inspired to do that by Sonia, who is, who is delicately, uh, the same way mm -hmm. that uh, Chablob and Kai were kind of um, canoodling. She's doing the same to you uh, as, as a party mate. Um, and can I, can it be like, as she pulls him out, can it be like harder, harder? Oh, no. Yeah. She's doing it gently, but yeah, you want it harder. And ultimately <laughs> by the end of this, it's weird, Sonia, but you see his, you see his um, skin kind of push out oh. some of the, the smaller shards. So you're able to grab the bigger ones, but you, his skin kind of closes over. It's unlike anything you've seen before, but yeah, it pushes out, it pushes out these tiny glass things. Um, just so you know, Onyx, you would probably try to get the, that glass because it's, it's tiny, but as you know, glass, well, you're a glass dealer, as yeah. everyone, I guess, knows. Yeah, everyone knows now. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Onyx walks over to Pyrus, and I have um, my living gear, which is like a fungal film. It's kind of, I call it my little stash pocket. Um, and it opens up and just sort of accepts the glass. Oh, like a and, almost like a magnet. Yeah. And I'm like, do, 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 sort of like... You are know. you trying to be? Are you trying to be sneaky about this? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do real quick. Make an agility agility challenge roll because I imagine your your crew might know that you do this, but anyone else, it yeah, you might not want to know. Okay. Jeremy oh, yeah. can't whistle, but Onyx is whistling right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Matt <laughs> twenty again. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Okay, so the way you yeah. your dice. <laughs> so the way this actually looks, it's it's like a hairy, it's like a hairy fungus, um, and it's flat, and it's and you all know that it kind of sticks to his body, but his shirt, which is already part parted open, you, you <laughs> kind of can't tell the difference between his hairy chest and also this weird fungal carpet that kind of slides up his body <laughs> and and just like snags some of these tiny glass shards and holds them together on his body and then slides away. Um, so Wait, you have a fungal carpet on your stomach? That's also a fanny pack? <laughs> <laughs> that's correct, Sonia. Uh, okay. That's also chest hair. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. It looks like the, the short and curlies, but it's really just, it's That's a fungal amazing. film. Just That's cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, so having, having performed this duty for Chabwa, Chabwa takes you back to his, his headquarters cyst, and he once more reveals the seed of Gaia. And the way he does this is he reaches inside um, the the wound that's covered in worms. It would look like intestines, except it's worms. Um, and he reaches inside. That, that doesn't and, get old. And he reveals the seed of Gaia one more time. Um, and we, yeah, we have an image of what it looks like uh, or what it might look like. This glowing chaotic artifact. It is a seed of Gaia, a seed of knowledge. And, and he, he says, no, who will be the bearer of this seed? I will. 
Joel yeah. don't mind a sort of kind of leadery around here. So mm -hmm. kind of leadery, wonderful. <laughs> I have to warn you. Do not try to swallow this. It Why will, not? It will hurt coming out. I'm used to that. Well, and I will be, this. this will be very difficult to get out in the first place. See, I have a hole in my intestine. We don't need this. You see. have none. Just put it in a sack or something. Sure. Can, can I have a living like pouch as that's a, like a little tiny backpack, like one of those cute, you know, oh. like if you're in Japan and there's a bunch of tourists, like it's a little, it's a little <laughs> animal, but it's like um, it's kind of like a conch shell, but it opens. You, and you don't want the you don't want the chest air. No, <laughs> wait, you're at, are are you actually asking Chaba for this? No, I'm asking Keeper Amy. Keeper Amy for um, I I, I think you would have a sack, but you're asking for a living sack. Yeah. Do you have any live? I don't think you have any living gear. I, I would say you can buy you can buy living gear. There actually is a a cis a pustule market stand that sells this. Um, it's just a normal pouch then, and I slide it in my little backpack. Okay. Um, yeah. Around. Yeah, living gear. Just so you know, it's almost it's they're they're really really intricate and. Um, built I guess they're 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 quite they're quite rare and the, the each one of them no matter what would have it would cost a, a fair a fair amount of money um so having just if, if you say you have if, if you wanted an opportunistic item I would let you spend a secret point for it but living gear is is extremely extremely special and on top of that it requires you to bond with it and to attach your essence to it to use it. Um, so, and all, on top that. of that, to have living gear, most people can only have one piece of living gear. Uh, otherwise, during any time they rest or sleep or do anything, it, it'll cause them strain because they're giving of themselves to operate this living gear. Yeah, uh, to charge it, right? To charge it, exactly. Um, so right, yeah. So right now you it's just a normal your, little backpack, but it's yeah. made up of uh, organic um, leafy matter. It was um, like woven vines that were woven together. Yeah, but they've been dried, and uh, so I, I slide it into that pouch on my back. I love it. Okay, so then uh, as, as you accept it, uh, Chabob looks at the rest of you and says, "Again, my thanks." I. I was not able to operate, uh, uh, to activate the seed of Gaia. I know I didn't tell you that before, but in order to activate it, I, I received it from my, from a friend of mine, a, a family member, an, another insect weaver who was bonded with an insect. And I suspect that you must go to that, their island where I hail from and visit the wellspring on that island. And there you might be able to activate the seed of Gaia. And he shows you a map of new Gaia. And, and if we could see the, there's a an image that we have this map of new Gaia. And in the bottom, bottom left, there is this island that he has marked and says insect druids rule here. Mm -hmm. And on one of those islands, he points it in the in the southwest. He points to it and says, "There, that is where you must go. That is my home." But I warn you, I have not been back in years, and it is almost surely more dangerous. It is called Rishipik. Rishipik. Risipik. If we want to write it down, it's R I S apostrophe Y P I K. R I S apostrophe Y P I K. Risipik. Risipik. Mm. Where the insect people rule. Well. Mm. Yes, it is. It is where we once where we once ruled. I have no idea what what rules now, but I would say beware for. The friend of mine who brought me the seed of Gaia, they, they were looking to escape. Escape what? 
like I said, the corruption. There were. They said the, the insect weavers have always been oppressed by the Council of Mothers and the plant weavers and the Green Army. They've always been sought as thought of as other. But on this island, the insect weavers have developed a new leader and a new cause that does not paint them as other, but she says it is equally terrifying what they have become. And before it got too bad, she left. Hmm. And when she left, she stole the seed of Gaia. So not only are you wielding... Stolen merchandise. Powerful stolen merchandise. Hmm. Luckily, we have someone who's not unfamiliar with this trade. Luckily. Well, so, I, do have, I do have a stash. You do have what? Oh, what? Nothing. Um, I, have a, I have a nice little stash pocket in case we need to put anything, keep anything nice and hidden. Well, I urge you to make haste and to take care as... All four of you will be welcome in the black market, in the blister socket, should you ever need my aid. Chubwub, I thank you for your diplomatic reasoning with us and um, your kindness and generosity. And I, I, I pet one of his worms as a gesture of acceptance. Okay, and the worm and Chabwub all weirdly, like everything undulates and moves and squiggles. Mm -hmm. um, of course they do. Right. And in, in glee and affection. Mm. I'm glad we could come to <clears throat> this agreement. Shall we to your place, Rocket? Chabwub, <clears throat> it's been a pleasure as always. I will uh, catch you the next time. You keep that worm nice and nice and healthy, okay? Sure. Yes. Yes. This time we will. I, I will be looking more into what caused this chaos, of course. Sure. Of course. If you ever need my services, you know, you know how to find me. I do. Thank you once more. If there's anything else you need in the in the marketplace, be sure to take what you need. Um, I feel like there would be a Picari saying like a goodbye, like may your bond deepen. Something Ooh, like that. that's the goodbye yes. that we would grant to each other. May your bond deepen as well, fellow Picari. Nice. And you, you little cutie, come in here. Oh, yeah, she's purring. She's purring. I love her. <laughs> it's a him. That's a him. I love him. Um, but <laughs> but I, I met her as in you. <clears throat> <clears throat> We shared a moment. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, our, does anybody yeah. else want to shop? I say we run back to the ship. I'm, I'm getting inside a, a worm. Yeah, mm -hmm. TFO. Yeah, we're, we're good. I mean, I get it, but it's still gross. I want out. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you, you all make your way out. Remember, remember, Sonia, that you you came came away with a vial from Nostretti. Or mm -hmm. actually, she gave it to Pyrus to give to you. Um, Didn't you guys? Oh, I did not give oh, it yet. Yeah, you did I not give it yet. Done. Okay, fair enough. So le uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm. It sounds you're going to Risipic, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. And you're taking the sky ship. Of course. Does We're anybody? Going to, oh yeah, go ahead. Does anybody need anything from Stretty? You can just tell her I said hello. Like she has a lot of concoctions. She does sure. a lot of things with powders and stuff, maybe. I'm kind of interested. I'm trying to remember the name of something that I was interested in. Not just um, the the sawgrass powder, but there's also another type of powder um, that I'm, I'm curious if I can buy some here uh, that has, there's a lot of different um, effects. Performance uh, enhancer? Yes. You get it. Yes. So... The, the one of them is Kalia Venom, and that that's the good stuff. That's it, what it really it, it really is the good stuff. Right. Um, that might be a little too intense. I think there was another okay. um, less powerful. I mean, I would go for some Kalia powder. Uh, there's a there's let me pull up. This, there's white drops, spit gland, or ember 
beetle. You already got some sawgrass powder. Um, what are you looking to do or what do, what do you hope that it does? Uh, I just want like temporary level up when it comes to combat maybe or sort of like speed. Look. Um, yeah, I think I think then an an ember an ember beetle might do it. It an okay. ember beetle in battle would help you quite a bit. Um you you would take a minus two penalty to health, but it also it, it doesn't really have any drawbacks and it uh you would take half damage from effects of fire and heat. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Otherwise, uh... look, I just, you know, as the de facto mother of this group, I want to make sure I'm prepared. I have a knapsack full of snacks and, yep. and you know, any sort of performance enhancers that, that okay. my team's going to need. <laughs> okay. So uh, they're all pretty expensive. I don't know how much money you've got on you, but well, I did all, raid they, that beggar's cup, if you recall. Yes, you did. Um, With permission. Yes. Did you write down how, how much? Oh, of course I did. Okay. White drops, spit glands, and black drops are five sapphires. Um, black drops help you s basically see better. Um, spit glands help you uh, negate poison. And white drops basically help you help you see better as well. Um, and then amber beetles protect you. Sawgrass heals you. And then red leeches are are awesome. Well, that they would just hear, cure diseases. Other than that, what you know, Kalia venom lets you let lets you play. It lets you play other seeker. Um, which means you would be able to use an essence power that you otherwise maybe wouldn't have access to for, for a price. Whoa. For a, for a price of your health. Ah. But this but this essence that you power that you could use could be any rank. And it's tough to it's 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 always okay. very difficult to tell which power, once you drink it, that it actually gives you. That's so cool. That's so cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, and that was the the red leech, did that? Kalia venom. Oh, right, 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 right. I think that's a little too pricey for me. Maybe I'll just pick up a little more sawgrass powder since we're here. Well, I mean, Kalia venom, rank zero, it, if it's a rank zero one, it's only one sapphire. If it's rank my, one, it's five sapphires. And my friend, Stretchy, maybe she'll give us a deal. Ooh, okay. Kind of her thing. Yeah, let's check in with Nostretti. Is this something that we were, if this is something we're going to need on the journey, I'm happy to fund it. <gasps> yeah. Oh, I forgot we have Mr. Moneybags here. Okay. Yeah, so let's get some Kalia venom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Under Pirates. one condition. Mm-hmm that I have access to it if I want it. Oh, of course, of course. I have always <laughs> the perfect marauder. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so how, how, what are, yeah, let's let's play this out. So you go to Nostretti um, and she's there and she says, ah, yes, you're back. So good to see you. Uh, and you, and you, friend of Sonia. Um, oh, that's right. And then I reached for the vial that she gave me and then finally handed it over to Sonia now. Oh, ah, tricky, tricky. You were going to keep that for yourself, you I little. I, I forgot. I honestly forgot. It, a lot happened since you a left. A lot happened I, in the last five minutes. I mean, do you see his face? Yes, he's. Oh, look. Look how innocent he looks. But I know demon hunters, and they are never innocent. Hmm. What can I do for you? I was hoping to buy some Kalia venom from you, perhaps. Of course, of course. How powerful would you like it? Just the simple stuff. Keep it easy, right? How much money are you looking to spend? Let me ask you that. Well, I wonder if you have a, you know, friend's half price discount or a sort of employee discount. Uh, yes, perhaps because you know Sonia. What, uh, what, uh... How many sapphires do you have? 
I have no well, idea mainly in sapphires. I'm, I'm just going to sidebar with Onyx real quick. Look, I got one sapphire. But, um, <laughs> is there, you know, there's also this stuff that comes from these venomous flying lizards from Sky City. And I'm, it's called um, spit. 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 Yes. I'm wondering if you can throw that in and oh. we'll call it sapphire for each. Uh, spit, spit. The spit glands are at least five sapphires, but it, I, I oh. still don't even know how many Kalia venom vials you are looking for. I'll tell you what. Do you, uh, how about we, we do a trade? For some of that stuff that you saw that you had earlier, maybe you could use a little bit more. Okay, well, this is awkward. Because Wait, are you giving me, what are you giving me? And at this point, the living gear opens up. And oh. since Onyx can uh, defy gravity, a couple little glass shards just kind of come hanging in the air right in front of Mistretti's face. Oh. This is awkward. That's hers! <clears throat> Oh, he doesn't know. <laughs> that was ours. <clears throat> wow, look at that. That's yeah, beautiful. Yes, isn't I, it? yes. I, could I could perhaps manipulate this into, oh, into, into anything, really. Yes. Oh, look how beautiful they are. Gorgeous, quite, yes. Okay. Probably worth five sapphires, some would say. It's very rare. Um, it yes, all of these. Everything that you we've asked for. Okay. okay. All right, here's what I will do. Yes, you may have two spit glands and two fairly powerful Kalia venom. That is all I can do. Okay. Okay. Stretty. Stretty. It's been a pleasure do doing business with you. Pleasure doing business with you. Oh, this is so, this is wonderful. Oh, and fun fact, you're not going to have to worry about the chimification much longer, I don't think. Mm-mm. Mm -hmm. No more commentification. Kind of You're welcome. Have an, have some, how about this? Have another sawgrass powder. Oh, or so that that you have one sawgrass powder. One for each of you. Oh, oh that's very kind. Very, very, very kind. Very generous of you. Yes, part of, I mean, part of my deal with Chabwa of why I get to keep a market stand here is, is because of our mutual needs. So you keep him happy, you keep me happy. Nostretti, I didn't. Didn't you though? I didn't, I didn't, honestly. Didn't you though? Well, actually, I, yeah, that's kind of your thing. Okay, it is actually a thing. Into she, she got, got it. Climber. She climbs ladders. So, so actually, write down that you now have two rank two Kalia Ooh. Venom. What? Right. Satine, yeah. you have something different that's actually more powerful. Oh. Um, and then two two spit glands. Who's gonna hold on to those? I'll hold on to the spit gland, uh, which just negates poison, right? It, uh, yeah. when, when it takes effects, you can remove a poison affliction. Okay. Um, and you can also for eight hours, uh, you you can use a boon to resist poison. Okay. Uh, but you do get ill for one round when you take it, so. Okay. If you take it during combat, you'll you'll be rendered stunned, which means you can't take actions during that round. Um, Nira, do you want the uh, Kalia venom? Yes, very much so. I'll hold on to that. Thank you. Okay. If there's anything, is there is there anything else you want to do in the in the black market? No, I want to hop on this this blight down ship. Really okay. In, so before we. Before we take a break, I'm, I'm going to use a, a classic asunder segue, which there is never a segue. You are always in danger. And so we're going to cut straight to the arrival um, in New Gaia at Rissapik. And you are operating this your skyship. Does it have a name, by the way, Onyx? The skyship? Yeah. Um. It does. Uh, I named it after um, 
Yeah, we like, if you give me a second, I'm just trying to remember what I named. Yeah, well, maybe we'll come back to it after the break. Yeah. But um, While he remembers that, did uh, depending on how long the trip take, did we have time for a rest so I could heal? You up? absolutely each had time for a rest, awesome. um, which does mean you can heal, You can, anyone can heal their healing rate, which is a quarter. And and I'm not sure, is, is there anything else y'all can do during a rest? Is that why you asked, Pyrus? Uh, well, no, I asked also because then I get to uh, re, uh, uh, I get a full allotment of my shake it off, which is two times. Oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm fully healed again. Uh -huh. It's yeah. a lot to get to bring him down. Perfect. Uh, so, yes, go ahead. Yes, it's uh, his name, it's named Perrier uh, because it's, <laughs> it's, always, it's always sparkling. The Perrier. <laughs> And and G is is your ship's pronoun uh, pronoun she and her. Absolutely. Amazing. Yes. Okay, so right before the break, we're gonna we're gonna do this. Okay, you do arrive in the vicinity of the insect weaver island Rissipik, but the journey took longer than expected as you encountered a storm that is still raging. Lightning bolts pepper the air and they get closer to the Perrier than Onyx would like. Sheets of rain pour down, but Pyrus's strength on the sky rudder and Onyx's control of the Blyce keeps the ship, ship aloft and going in the correct direction. Something strange lights up inside Nira as it seems as though she and Sonia are working together at the bow. Sonia navigates using the map that Chabwa has given you, while Nira seems to clear a path through the rain. It's inconsistent and strange, but Nira's almost glowing, and no one asks too many questions, as whatever she's got going on does actually benefit the group. Here's a couple of things. Sonia, you have determined in this trip that the Kalia Venom that Nostretti gave to you is of the highest caliber, super powerful. It's ultra powerful. It could grant you the power to survive in a highly dangerous situation, but using it, you know, has the capacity to kill you. It would be a risk to use it. Nira, you're holding on to the chaos shard inside of you. I'm gonna say you, you take two strain and one more discord. <laughs> okay. That it, it one this is insanity that's that it's inside you and also you've been holding on to it unless you you aren't but I can't imagine how you're not um throughout this entire journey which mm -hmm. is the, the better part of a day. Mm -hmm. So roll a d20 one more time you're looking for a 3 or lower. Mm -hmm. 17. 17, okay, but you do have a three discord and once discord equals your strength. Bad I, things happen. I believe, yeah, bad thing. Well, yeah, bad things of course happen. Um, <laughs> bad things. Oh, 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 oh. Who, who else do we have? Um, yeah. Wait, sorry. Strain. I'm gonna have to strain this for your will. Okay, uh, Pyrus. Um, your your job technically is you know using the rudder to steer through the air and and to man the thorn cannon. Um, it this I would say this storm has numbed you out, but I need you to roll a will a will challenge roll to see if you've been able to maintain control enough to not totally freak out and accidentally fire a thorn a thorn the lightning the lightning is just causing you a lot of um trauma and uh and and kind of remembering some stuff from your childhood so let's just see if you accidentally fire one of the three uh thorn cannons natural 20. Natural 20, okay, <laughs> yeah. yes okay so you hold you hold on you hold steady um despite all of the, the things that the thunder and the storm is bringing back to you um, from your past, you you do hold steady. Um, I will still say though that you just go ahead and take a strain for uh, for surviving this storm. And in fact, everyone take one strain just for being in inside the storm. And Onyx, 
you're in charge of the Blyce and react. You're kind of manning the ship. So I'm going to make you make three, three intelligence challenge rolls. Okay. And we'll see what happens if you fail. So you're just looking for a 10 or better. Oof. Two. Okay. Another one. 17. Nice. Come on, baby. 12. 12. Okay, so you only fail once. This is because all of the, the lightning and the clouds, it's difficult to see. And even with Sonia's really awesome guidance and navigational skills um it's hard to dodge random chaotic lightning so you you did kind of you you kind of veered right into a path of one uh once and so your ship will take two d6 damage and you take one strain not the, not the and that's on top of just the storm um i take what how much you take one more strain and your ship takes 2d6 damage how much health does your ship have? It's like uh, that's a good question. Seventy-five. Yeah. Sorry, I pulled it up and then asked the question. Um, okay, so with that, you are entering into New Gaia on the island of Risipic for uh, insect weavers. I'll explain what you see, and then it's going to be up to you guys to land this ship when we get back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Awesome. I, go I can't wait. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to be back in 10 minutes. It's 741 Pacific time. And when we do, we're going to take a little break and we're going to do a giveaway from Dragon Burn Designs. We're doing a giveaway to someone in Twitch chat that's going to enter the keyword when I give it to you for this charming little dice tower that we're going to mail to your home, wherever it may be, but you have to give us an address in order to do so. Okay, see you all back here in 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. 
The world is broken. Broken by the gods who gave it life and abandoned it. We have been left to fend for ourselves, our divine essence bonding with the plants, which we reshaped into weapons, bonding with the sea, which then reshaped us. Next was the insects, and then the beasts of the land. We found remnants of the gods, chaos, the power to transform reality, but it was not meant for us to wield. The secret societies, with both noble and selfish goals, have tried to control it. Something has changed. Gaia has awoken from her slumber, and Asunder has begun to devour itself. The Naga have betrayed the Alliance. Demons flood the Black Isle, and the dead have begun to rise. Most deny the end is coming, but we've seen the signs and cannot turn back. We are the Seekers, and we will find the answers wherever they take us. Our story can be your story. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for being here to watch our live play of Asunder, a brand new role playing game coming to Kickstarter November 17th. And uh, in honor of that, we're doing a giveaway from the incredible Dragon Burn Designs, who has have sent us some custom Asunder goodies that we can mail out to our beautiful viewers, and that's you all. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the dice and do a giveaway through Nightbot in just a minute. So sorry if you're watching on YouTube. You can pop over to Twitch, type in exclamation point seed, and then pop on back to YouTube if that's where you like to watch. I only know how to do a giveaway randomized through Twitch. Uh, so that's why it is that way. Type exclamation point seed. You have to be willing to uh, give a mailing address, um, but it, it will not be put public in, in any way and you can give it directly to me um and uh okay yeah i'm just i'm stalling so more people can enter we have 26 people that are currently eligible let me show you one more time you can see it pictured there they are these charming little dice towers we're giving away one of them this week we'll give away another one in a future week and uh okay i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna Roll it right now. Are you ready? It's going to Nalar underscore. Congratulations. I'm going to reach out to you in a Twitch whisper and get a mailing address for you. Congratulations. Yay, Dice Tower. Okay. Um, and then let me just tell you all a little bit more. Um, thanks so much for watching the incredible Amy Vorpal as she brings us into the world of Asunder, this world without metal. And uh, let's see. I told you about the campaign going live on November 17th. You can go to bit.ly slash Asunder RPG. That's where you can get you type in your do your little Kickstarter. Let me know when the campaign goes live thing. There's going to be two different source books, two sets of epic menus, a novel, a keeper screen and custom dice that are all part of that Kickstarter because they know what they're doing. You know, that's. You get that, you get those bonus, those like the perks when you keep on going. Anyway, Kickstarter words. Um, and if you want to see the Seeker's Guide ahead of time, craft a character for yourself, fall in love with it the way that we have, there's a quick start guide that you can access if you go to bit.ly slash asunder underscore S uh, Q S G quick start guide. And if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link right below me down below. Um, next week, we're going to take the week off because it is election week if you're in America like we are. And um, that's a day that is fraught in many ways for many people. And so we'll just we'll just take a dark night. Um, and uh, and then we'll be back the following week. And congratulations one more time to Nalar. And with that, I will give it back to our keeper, Amy and the incredible players. <coughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, not just me, everybody. There we go. Yay! I was really good. <laughs> Yay! Uh, cool. So y'all have to land this this Perrier ship. Uh, but first, what are we looking at for damage for Perrier? Perrier has six damage. Awesome. Oh. And it has seventy five. She has seventy five health. So uh, yeah, that's fine. You you guys made it through. Um, you're looking out over the sea. And that's kind of where you've been. That's how you've traveled is above the sea as you reach New Gaia. And if we can get the image of the map of New Gaia one more time, um, okay. you're heading to the Southwest region where Chad Wolf has directed you it are the insect weavers that he knows of. And he is positive that there is a wellspring there. That's where the seed needs to be activated. He wasn't able to travel there because of his connection to Kai and his worm. Um, 
Which yeah. How do you travel with a worm that big? How do you travel with a worm that big? That's it's a, it's a really probably probably a big old sky ship, or you make the worm swim. Look, we haven't thought about that. Poor poor Kai and Chabob. How'd they get there? How'd they get to the mainland? Um, maybe when he was a baby. Um, but if you see at the bottom, it says in handwriting, "Insect druids rule here." And if you remember in New Gaia, this is where essence, people's essence, humans' essence bonds with plants or insects. And neither is good, is, is better than the other, but insect weavers have been um, stigmatized, have stigmatized <laughs> and, and a little bit oppressed and That's thought, of gross. thought of as other. I <laughs> <laughs> will hear you. Uh, so you, this is kind of your view, your, your aerial view. I'd say you're, pretty high up in the air, um, but as you come in for the landing, you get closer and closer, 200 yards, about 100 yards, and the wind is buffeting you around. Um, this is a this is a heavy uh, a heavy storm, almost an extreme storm. So anything you do, you're going to have to do with two banes. Um, but I'd like to I'd like to see how you land it. As you're coming in, it's really tough to see where where there's life, um, but it, but what? Tell tell me what you're looking for when you're landing this ship. Well, I want to see like a, just a good enough clearing to where I know that we're not going to land on top of, you know, maybe like a giant Super tree stump or something that's going to go through the bottom of the ship. Yeah. So, so. The, the best the best clearings and glades um, happen to be. You're coming from the south. Um, the mainland is a little bit from the southeast, but you came around to the south, and it's going to be close to the beach, close to the water. So okay. the safest, uh, they're, they're, on this particular island, there's not really a dock or a port um, for you to land. But but it does, from your experience with ships, the edges of islands and the edges of the land seems to be the best place for your sky ship to. So are we landing? Am I landing right on the beach, or, or just a little bit inland from there? Um, that, that would be up to you, but the beach, okay. the beach stretches for a while. And as the beach kind of turns from sand into growth, the growth itself is more like, it seems to be more like ferns, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Okay. So you could, you could pick sand or the ferns. Yeah. Um, since I am a guide into the wilderness. Yes. I... Since Sonia, you're a guide you in the wilderness, Sonia, I will say you you know that there are yes this is a place where insect weavers live humans live here you also know that asunder itself has plenty of threats of insects that have not bonded with humans of animals and beasts that have not bonded with humans of plants who have not bonded with humans so the most neutral place where there there are just fewer threats would be the beach um monsters themselves may you you've ran, run into a few crabs and worms but but perhaps the sand might be the most neutral if if these insect and plant weavers are all over the place who knows if you might actually squish a building in the plants or uh encounter a fish or uh, some insects on the water mm. the beach Yes, because Onyx and the people from Sky City have the power to command gravity at their will, could the Perrier just sort of hover above the sand, perhaps? Just for fun. It won't crush any sea creatures or sand critters that way. Yeah, absolutely. I think, Onyx, you could command your ship not to fully land. It is a, it is a sky ship, after all. And this isn't something like there's no hover or physics really required mm -hmm. life crystal itself is defies gravity so okay um, i'm not going to take any like strain or anything for that for no i think your ship yeah your ship is designed i mean it's blinged okay. out in blice crystal and blice crystal defies I mean, gravity this is cool so. floating yeah <laughs> totally so yeah. guys i want to show you something um yeah, so onyx moves in and check it out okay yeah let, we're not even yeah, landed let, well, uh, yeah, you're uh, you're uh, going you're going further down, but you're not quite at the ground yet. I want to yep. see how how you're able to land it again. You're going to do this with two banes because of the winds and the rain, mm. and it's not just hey guys, this is happening. Like you're yelling, hey guys, yeah, check right. this out. <laughs> it's it's stormy and windy and 
Uh, hard to hear. Yes, pirate. Am, am I insisting him in any way since I'm helping with the rudder? With the and rudder. To... Yeah, trying not trying not to uh, crash right into a tree. Absolutely. Yeah, you you are definitely helping um, from what you can see. And I'll say, Sonia, you're helping too, just because uh, you are a guide and you're navigating. Um, I want to so... walk up behind Onyx and whisper in his ear, "You can do this." You are, I may be the captain of our crew, but you are the captain of the Perrier. Yes, that is excellent. And I want to give him a boon to counteract one of those banes with my expert advice. Expert that advice. Is that Onyx, expert Onyx advice? hears this. Onyx hears okay. this and feels like extra confidence and whips out his Blyce sunglasses, throws them on. But he doesn't even have to grab them because, you know, the gravity. So the, the sunglasses come up and just open. <laughs> And then just fit over his eyes, and he just like. Nice. Oh, City's so, the coolest place to be from. His extra, his extra confidence, amazing. Yeah. So, meanwhile, Pyrus is steering this, uh, this aeronautic nightmare. Um, and, <laughs> <Choke it off. laughs> and and Sonia uh, helping everybody by pointing where uh, we we need to land, um, specifically on the beach and away from away from the plants and away from the the toxic water. So Onyx, uh, go ahead and make a roll. You're at two banes because of the storm, but it seems like well, everyone, you do have a boon, so that cancels out one of the banes, and okay. then Pyrus is helping you, so that gives you, that cancels out another bane. Um, <laughs> I, look, Sonia <laughs> is technically weird. helping you too, uh, but I, I, I'm gonna say this is just this is just difficult in general. So um, okay. yeah, you, this is gonna be a straight roll. Let's just see how you do in a storm. And, uh, we'll make this intelligence. Oh. It's fine. Your D20 plus your intelligence uh, modifier. Oh, wait. I, I was looking for my for my sheet. Um, so that's going to be a 19. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're both. The roll was shitty, but, you know, intelligence. The roll, oh, really? But you had a high intelligence? Mm hmm. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Your intellect is, is plus one. Oh, I thought it was an 11. It is, so your modifier is plus one, so you would just add plus oh, one. Oh, that's right, oh, you know what? Ooh. In that case, <laughs> oh, let me no. turn down Sky City's hot new rapper that I turned up, and uh, <laughs> turn it up, turn it down. I was like, that's oh, kind of messing up my flow here, and I wrote What'd you get? eight, so that would be eight. a nine. Okay, um, <laughs> a nine total, perfect. Love it. So the wind, the wind is buffeting you back and forth. Uh, the the rain is is torrential. Everyone's slipping and sliding on the deck itself. Um, it this is a sky ship. This isn't necessarily a storm ship or a rain ship. So uh, everyone's kind of holding on for dear life. Um, I'm going. Everyone, everyone, make an agility as you as you come down. Everyone make an agility challenge roll. With I should on my cat. Yeah, you and your cat. Yeah, you and your the cat. <laughs> mounting your cat, sure. Yeah, because your cat can fly, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, um, <clears throat> everyone else, make a challenge, a, an agility challenge roll with two veins. Ooh. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Keeper, you're killing me. And six. Except Sonia, you don't have to make it with Banes. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, you're on your cat and the cat can fly and, and readjust yourself. Oh, good. So Mira, what'd you get? Oh, I have a 10. It was a 15 minus a five Bane. Ooh, okay, perfect. And the way I remember know. Banes work, you take, if you're rolling two Banes, you take the higher of the Bane and subtract it from your D20. Pyrus, what'd you get? Uh, I had a total of uh, 18 plus one because my agility and then minus five for my Bane. Still, what's that? So that what is uh, 14, 14. Heck yeah. Okay, so you're fine. Onyx? Now are we adding for the agility? Do we add a modifier there or is it the- Yeah, you can still add your modifier, absolutely. Okay, okay. So that's a plus two, I believe, for- um, Your speed. agility- it's a speed, right? It's the same thing as speed. Uh, no, it's agility is a separate thing, and your score is thirteen, which means you add three. Nice. Oh, I, fantastic. That's okay, so that's going to be a thirteen. Awesome. Okay, so you, yeah, your goal is to get a ten or higher. Nira, you got a ten. That's enough. Sonia, what'd you no, get? Eight. 
An eight? Okay. Even though you didn't have any bangs. Yeah. So, okay, so nice. Perfect. The ship is rocking and rolling. <laughs> Pyrus holding steady. Um loves it, is totally <laughs> numb to this storm. I mean, I mean, the lightning tried to shake him. He remembered a little bit from his past, but that didn't shake him either. He loves he loves the thrill of the action. Um, and right now you are in the midst of action. Um, you're, you're coming in for the landing and this is right up Pyrus's alley. This is absolutely dangerous, uh, should never happen. And he is just holding steady with the rudder. Um, Nira, Meanwhile, uh, the, the, some, the chaos inside of her is is just maneuvering her around where she just everything feels right. You know, like this is this is she's experiencing a bit of a high, um, a trip even. So so the things that you're seeing are kind of figures in the air. She does not look safe, but the <laughs> chaos is making her safe. She's reaching out for things. Um, you know, uh, the, the entire sky looks like just a two-dimensional uh, two dimensional backdrop. I'm to like her. conducting <laughs> the lightning like an orchestra. Absolutely, yeah. She's not holding on to anything. <laughs> she should be falling overboard, and yet she's not. Onyx, meanwhile, you're holding, you're, you're just, you're kind of cementing yourself to the Blythe crystals on the ship, so you're tethering yourself pretty, pretty securely. Meanwhile, Sonia has has uh, yeah used her animal as a mount, and the and the jaguar. Look, cats don't like wetness; they just don't like rain. The cat's freaking out. You never should have mounted her because she she doesn't want to be on the ship. She thinks that maybe jumping off of the ship will get her away from the rain. Maybe if she goes under the ship, that'll help. So she actually um, leaps and pushes you off the ship as. Onyx crashes the ship into the beach. Remember, you did fail. You did fail that roll too. So, the ship itself is. <laughs> what a shit show! Yeah. Fine, we're fine. Oh god. I'll say that y'all, you were falling from about fifty yards, and I think it's five d six every ten yards. So, for the. I'll say for uh, Sonia, you take three d six because your your uh, cat is, or jaguar, sorry, jaguar is able to palm is able to stop your fall a little bit. But the ship, there's no hope for the ship. So five d six damage for the actual parry. Oh, eight. I got eight damage. Eight, eight damage. Okay. Five d six. Yeah, I mean the ship's pretty sturdy, but yeah, you guys might need some roll ones. <laughs> yeah, roll <laughs> ones, Jeremy. <laughs> Out of a potential thirty. Yeah, it could only be five. It could. You were rolling really low earlier. <laughs> one. 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 Oh. I'm but rolling one d six. Roll five d six. Roll five. Holy shit! Did I miss that? I was like. <laughs> Oh That's my god! That's what I was thinking out. <laughs> oh, I was like totally missed that. Hold on. Okay. Oh god. Oh, two, three, five, seven, one. Eight. You should keep That's that one. Be at Twelve. Not bad. Okay, so add that to the damage that that Perrier has already taken. I think that was six, so eighteen, mm -hmm. eighteen total damage. Um. Yeah, this at this point it's not it's not quite a third damage, but but I'm gonna say you you would know to before you're gonna take off again to do some repairs. Um, meanwhile, thank goodness, Sonia, you landed on the beach first, even though you did take some damage. Uh, you and your jaguar palm, you're not dead. Oh, fine. You you are able to you're not fine either, but you are you are using I, I want you to use your your guide uh I guess profession to assess where the nearest threat might be. Uh, obviously you know threats can come from the jungle where you've landed, uh maybe the beach, but also the water. So this is a perception check. It goes with two banes, but I'll let you so I have a thing called catch the scent. Ooh. Mm. Is what that something that I can do? use? It absolutely is something I, you can use. All right. So I basically can track and detect my prey. <laughs> Perfect. And this is an essence power, which you got because mm -hmm. you're bonded. Yeah. Um, because you took the bonded path. So this is. I calm, uh, calm. I calm him. 
Oh, and then we we both like sense. So okay. I go right, he goes left. Tracking. We, yeah. Okay. I love it. You're trying to uh, catch the scent. Um, you. So you get a boon. This is a storm. So you take two. You are still doing two banes, but. But I'm gonna say you you have a little bit more time because everyone else is busy crashing, and <laughs> and because you were so you were so instinctive to do this. So I'll just say a straight perception challenge roll. Okay. As you look for your prey. An eleven. Perfect. Yes. Short answer. You do see a threat. You see two things actually. While everyone's busy dealing with the Perrier uh, and, and the very difficult <laughs> landing, um, you, Palm has been, has been looking out at the jungle and you, you and your bond with Palm, you know that Palm feels like he's being watched uh, as the hairs on the back of Palm's neck straighten and stand straight up. Palm's ears prick. And, and the wings flare, it's difficult to tell what Palm sees or if, if, they can, if he can see anything, but there is, there is something there. It's not, it, it's only being watched though. It doesn't seem like an immediate threat. We can't smell it, like it's too much wind. Too, yeah, too much, I would say too much wind. Although you did, you did succeed, so you know that the, this is human in nature. Ah, okay. The other thing that you do notice, though, is there is a, it, the, the sea itself is rippling all over the place. Waves are appearing out of nowhere. It's, it's, a, it's a stormy sea. But there's a ripple in the waves that seems to be consistent as it comes towards the shore. Um, and it's very slight, but you, you can tell something is the, the ripples are getting shorter and in and, and between they're they're kind of crossing paths and it seems as though Narira! and i just yell that like i've done that before perhaps like that's the like the warning call Narira! amazing so the rest of you hear this you've landed on the ship what do you do I want to take up battle stations. I want to grab my wooden harpoon with its bone tip that was given to me by the seafarers. And I want to climb up the top of escape hatch of Perrier and plant myself flat against the top. Um, uh, uh, so you, are, are you on the deck of the ship or are you up on a on, on mast? Does this look like a, a sea ship? I pictured it more like a spaceship. Like it, it's got a flat top, but mm -hmm. I could get oh, out a flat of it. Top. Okay, um, yeah, good call. Yeah. So yeah, you're up on the, I, I'll say the, wait, sorry. Um, it's an airship, right? So it's kind yeah. of like spherical, um, cool. not like a boat mast, I imagine? Or more, you more, me, like an, more like an airplane where it's, it's yeah, more like an airplane cylinder. than an open air boat. So, yeah, so I, I pictured that it. there's some sort of hatch that I've climbed ah, up. Like a, like a and I'm too. laying okay. flat on top of it, like love ready it. for a train fight. I love it. Okay. So you're, and you're, are, are you readying an, or, it's not called ready. I have my, app, my, my a, deadly tipped harpoon at the ready. Okay. In case, in case an enemy should appear. Perfect. Yeah. And I just wanted to get up there so it's a little bit higher ground so I can see out and I want to look at the water. Okay, love it. And the, yeah, I'll say the ship itself is probably uh, 20, what, 20 feet, 20, 20, about, uh, about seven. Two stories? Yeah, like, yeah, so we'll say eight yards long, 24 okay. feet, yeah, mm -hmm. in, in diameter. Um, uh, Pyrus. Um, am I able to get on a thorn cannon that faces both directions or it's only on one direction? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, you're. You can be on a thorn cannon, um, and I'll, I'll say it's a thorn cannon that can shift. <laughs> cool, I do that. Sorry, it's sorry, and I misspoke. It's one thorn cannon. It has it has three charges in it at the moment. Okay, yeah, I want to so, just get on the thorn cannon and wait to see if anything pops up. 
Okay. Ooh, it's like um that that sci-fi brand that we don't have to mention where where the the firing station is kind of below the ship so it can go 360. Oh. oh. Except for it's under. Oh, that. That's oh, cool. oh, I'm down with it. And now because you did crash into it, um, I would say one of those charges is gone. It it like misfired, and I'm gonna say to to operate it now. It is a living weapon, so. Actually, we'll say that they're all—all all the charges kind of spit out when when you took that hard fall. And and Pyrus, you will be able to shoot it, but every time you shoot it, you will have to take one strain as you pour yourself into this. Oh one. wow! Can you use a seeker that's, points that's cool. for a charge? Yes, you can. You can use a seeker point for a charge, which I haven't given y'all this time. But I, I believe some of you had some. Uh, here's how we're going to do seeker points for rollover. If you have any secret points at all, one will roll over to the next uh, session. Okay. Okay. Ooh. I had one. So do all of you still have one? I got one. I do. Yeah. yeah, we yeah we all had one. Okay. Cool. But yeah, it, we're not going to do any more rollover than that. Okay. Um, Sonia, you. Sonia, let's see. Sonia and Onyx, what do you want to do? So Sonia, you're still out. Uh, you know, checking everything out. Um, I, I did point at the water for you guys, but I'm gonna go like stock the 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 edge. Okay. So mind. you you sense something coming from the water. water's edge. Okay. So then um I imagine like Nira had she had the, where the hatch comes up that I've got like you know uh, like a one of those Lamborghini kind of doors that, that <laughs> <laughs> on the side. DeLorean. Because that's just kind of how <laughs> Onyx rolls and just. Shh. So the side that's facing that's <laughs> facing the water, I've got a boat and a glass arrow ready. Oh, Amazing. You yes, glass you. Glass arrows. Yes, I, you I, I, do. I got, I got them. That's fancy. Okay. Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, all right. So all y'all are, are readying, uh, readying for something to happen. Um, Sonia, as you approach, we'll say a few rounds go by, some seconds, nothing happens. Um, those of you who are focused on the water, you hear, you hear the slap, 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 slap of what could be it's something against the water. It almost could be rowing, except this doesn't sound quite like wood on water. It's it's um, organic uh, skin or <clears throat> insect chitin. Mm. And you, Sonia, you've cautiously approached the jungle, the edge of the forest, and you and Palm have been stalking it out. You do see humans who are mostly mostly nude but they do have some loincloths um and some cover on their top but it's it's mostly thin fibrous material they don't look like warriors at all you smell fear they you do not you actually don't smell fear you hear swarms and swarms of chittering insects even above the rain. But as you move towards them, they they move back. And and at some point as you move towards them, they break and run further into the jungle. Okay, cool. Splashing as they go. Awesome. Then I will uh go back and protect my friends now that I understand what's going on there. As you move back and protect your friends, the slap slap of the water does appear to get closer, and it, you almost wouldn't you almost wouldn't see these gigantic insects because they're each they're formed of such thin thin lines, <laughs> but they're enormous water strider. <laughs> and each each there they tower above you um you, you only see three at the moment but just to give you an idea their their shape is their shape is about three yards long they they the top the center of them looks almost like a beetle with 
big bulbous eyes uh, forming their eyes in the front. And then they have just tiny little spindly legs and somehow they are walking on the water and almost uh, rowing themselves forward. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just coming <laughs> towards their prey. Just standing there like, yes. Seems are to be intelligent beings, to my knowledge, based on what I know of of water strider beetles. Can they be reasoned with, or they're kind of? They're, I know that they're just a thing you fight with. Mm. <laughs> Let's see. Since you do worship Gaia, at least on some level, you would know there are. You would know at least that there are insects bonded with humans, and there are insects not bonded with humans, and these insects have not bonded with humans. Mm. Um, as far as intelligent, uh, they, they are intelligent creatures, but speaking with them, you could try. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't know. I, I think, I think there are in some cases you could communicate with an, an insect or a beast. And in some cases you wouldn't be able to, um, but I'm not sure that you would know that. I think, you know, I think Sonia might know if she mm. makes an intelligence check or challenge roll. <clears throat> I'm busy staring. She's busy staring. Okay. <laughs> so without further ado, guys, let's enter some real freaking combat. We're gonna yeah! enter combat now. Okay, so combat. You are not surprised. So this is how this is gonna go. There are fast turns and there are slow turns. The people who want to take fast turns, seekers go first as far as fast turns, and then creatures. And then for slow turns, again, seekers go first and then creature slow turns. Um, again, for fast turns, you would take one action. For slow turns, it's normally an action and a movement. Everyone has one triggered action that uh, you could see how, how all that works. Um, we could see how that works. But a lot of times uh, for the audience, what a triggered action is, is something when something happens, it triggers the player character or the creature to do something, if that makes sense. The most common, if, you, if you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, might be an attack of opportunity. But you do only get one triggered action per round. Uh, so it's like you can only take one attack if something moves out of range of melee. Enough mechanics talk. As far as fast actions, the re everybody uh, and, and order, you all get to decide what the order is. There are three giant water striders coming towards you swimming and rowing themselves on the surface of the water. I'm protecting Perrier, I'm shooting first. Okay. Um, and I would love, how far away is, is the first one? Um, I, at this point, it is a, it is a <laughs> long, let, let, let's say it's a, it's a long range. So long it, range it, is, is about a hundred yards. So if I was to use my arrow, a bow and arrow via distance shot, right? I could do to attack a target that's beyond your weapon's range, but no more than twice the weapon's range. You may make the attack roll with one bane. Okay, one bane then. Um, is there any way to add on seizing the advantage? Sure, you tell me how. Well, um, it's clumsy, right? Like it's a big red, red, red beetle. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, it's a, it's a beetle. It's a bumbling, I, I, I totally a see it. Behemoth. You, you can see it. Yeah, so it's like, boom, so it's just like, so like maybe you know it gets a little bit stuck in the wet sand and just like, boom, 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 boom. so I take advantage of the wobble. Perhaps there's one leg of the beetle that gets a little bit caught, making it a, just very stationary in that moment. Onyx rears back. Yeah, remember remember all of this, everybody's going to be using two banes because of the storm. The storm has not, okay. uh, has not <laughs> stopped. <ready. laughs> uh, okay, oh, so it hasn't, so like we're, okay, shit. Yeah. <laughs> but but your boon, you're, you're um, seizing the, what is it, seizing the moment? Seizing the effort, the seizing the advantage. So I have uh, attack roll with one boon, and then you're telling me I have a bane for distant shot. Um, um, and then was there two more banes for the weather? Yep. 
so really I get no boom, um, <laughs> just two veins. Just two veins. Okay. Remember all those nat 20s I was rolling over here? No. <laughs> Let's do it again. The secret, <laughs> secret point? Maybe if I roll a bad roll, can I use a secret point? Rerolls? If you, well, I mean, a but nothing's even happening only, yet. Why am I even talking secret, this? Speaking I know a secret point list. would only give you a boon, which would take away one bane. Got it. Whatever. I'm going for it. I feel good. So it's gonna be a. It's gonna be a ten. A ten. Okay, a ten. A, you. You're using your bow and arrow, right? So, okay, so you, it, it's just its just far enough where you would have to use that bane. It's a long range and your bow is a medium range weapon. So you you fire to shoot and between the the rain and how fast the insects are moving, which are is way faster on the water than you would ever uh, expect, you, you shoot a little bit, you overshoot a little bit. And so the, the, the one in front kind of moves forward. Um, it looks like you could hit it, uh, if you just wait a couple of uh, a couple of uh, rounds, it would get close enough where you would where your bow and arrow would do uh, would make that gap would bridge okay. that gap. Okay. Um, but you do shoot wide. Who's going next? If, if you're taking uh, a fast action, I'm taking a uh, slow action. Okay. Uh, they're at long range, correct? Yes. Uh, can I take a fast action, but prepare my attacks so when they get in range of the thorn cannon to fire at the closest one? Yes, you can. So yeah, so the the thorn cannon is a uh, medium range again, and yeah, so you just you're just you know you know that this only has well that every charge is going to cost you now. Um, so you're just ready for it to get it get it, get within range. Uh, Sonia and Nira. <laughs> I think I, I don't know if this is fast or normal or slow or whatever, but <laughs> what I would like to do, dear Amy Keeper, <laughs> I would like to hop on the back of my mount and fly up and jump off and attack the thing. So however long that takes, that's what I want to do. Amazing. I will call that a slow action, but they're taking, they're all three taking slow actions anyway, because they do need to get closer to you. So we're into slow actions now. You can totally do this. Um, you leap on your Jaguar. He lifts you up into the air and a little bit towards you and almost oh, catapults. If it's too high, can I whisper to her a piece of vital advice? Which <laughs> looks like the one on the right is the leader and that grants her a boon. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, this is going to be really cool. So, so technically, this this is uh, Jaguar is going to cat a pult you onto, yes. onto these water striders, and uh, and you're targeting the right. Um, yeah, you, you're going straight for the body of this. Yeah, um, we had a nap, right? So I can do the beast yes. aspect again. Yes, you can. <laughs> and what does the beast aspect give you? Um, I get plus two to perception, plus two to speed, and an extra d6 damage. Whoa. Oh, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to give you... You have Becca's boon. Um, you're, you're, you're coming from above, which is kind... I would say it's kind of a sneak attack. They're not really... They're not expecting that to happen. They were coming for easy prey, and now here you are flying. So... Yeah. This, I'm an assassin, so um, maybe I could use my seeker situation. Point. Yeah, you wouldn't need to use a seeker point. That actually gives you oh. that actually gives you a boon. So freaking... we already talked about two boons, which cancel out the two banes of the storm. And now you're an assassin, so you get to roll with one boon to attack these mothers. Here we go. Um. <gasps> That's an 18 on the die. 18! Oh, okay, <laughs> this is so exciting. Okay, so and you have, yeah, That was a, that. just for the boon, that was a five. What? Nice! Wow. Nice, okay, so we've got... <laughs> okay, we've got... We'll do, I'm doing the center one, the left one, and the right one. You were targeting the right one. Um, here's what happens. This, 
this makes so much sense to me because you are a Picari, so you know how how beasts work as and and maybe even uh maybe even water beasts these water striders look incredibly weak in their legs they the legs may may as well be made out of string the legs are just there to hold them up and get them going right they could slap you maybe they have six legs two short ones in front and then four big big long guys like this and they're just holding them up above the water with a bunch of hairs and and cilia that that make them uh make i, I don't know they've got the physics all worked out right like someone in this world <laughs> developed the physics. So, um but you know that kind of crashing down on top of them sateen i mean sonia it is actually the best possible strategy you could do <laughs> because these these uh, beings these insects are meant to fight up and move above the water so here's what happens you slam into you slam into one two of its legs well see how much damage let me see how much damage yeah you so, that is uh 13 points of damage i did a <laughs> five and a six and a plus two <laughs> i'm like i'm like on the oh edge of the seat here like ready to rock <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of its legs, one of its legs snaps into the front right leg. Then you landing on top of it, you're even as big as it is, you weigh you weigh so much more than it and you push it below the water. Yeah. This this renders it grabbed by by technically the water itself and defenseless. Yeah. Okay. So defenseless means it can't it can't take a turn, but I do want to get this right because it, it also has a lot of negatives uh, against it. Oh boy, this is not good. I look up at Nira and I'm like, did I do good? <laughs> this creature, this creature no, is bad. It cannot defend itself. Its defense is now five. It cannot use its actions, uh, and its challenge rolls result in failure. Yes. Um, so the reason <clears throat> this is based on a real creature, obviously, the, the water strider. Water striders are never, ever meant to go below the surface of the water. And, <laughs> and once they're under, it's really, really difficult for them to come back up, which is why I love Asunder, because you take things from real life that are gross and weird, and then you just like times it by a million and <laughs> make it huge. Okay, so you <laughs> just like put shops inside their cysts. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to play Asunder, just look up creepy things in Australia and go nuts. Um, okay, so one of them is rendered defensive. And that was the slow action of Sonia. Um, you and your you and your jaguar palm move at the same time. And if you take an action, that means that your jaguar can't take an action. But I think y'all did enough. Nira. Yeah. I uh, see Sonia's work and I see how easily the legs crumple and I take a cue. I'm going to go for the second water beetle. And uh, I'm actually going to... Oh... Okay, so I assume they're continuing to move towards the shore. They were about a uh, 100 feet away? 100 yards. 100 they yards. were 100 yards, uh-huh. And I am about six, uh, but how far are they now? I I, I mean, the, the thing is that they're going to move a lot closer, but at that point, Pyrus is going to get his um, thorn attack. And because Sonia was able to launch herself into the air, she was able to reach that. Your speed, I think, is a lot less. I think it's a lot... Yeah, my speed is 10, but I am six meters in the air right now. So I want to take a running leap. Maybe okay. I take a running leap off the tip of the Perrier, and I have my spear. Uh, I throw it on my back the way I'm used to doing, and I dive gracefully and beautifully high up using these six and a half meters in the air that I already am to launch myself. Uh, and I want to swim under the water and, uh, and then... Um, try and take out one of the legs of the second beetle because that seems to be the place it's oh my god I love it Damn. yes you yes. you you do you can't you can't quite make it to the water striders but okay. you dive into the water and the what this is I'm gonna say that you do it you know better than this but the water in asunder is oh you did say so, earlier 
<laughs> it's absolutely the so worst. beautiful and sparkling and blue and i just <laughs> you do it you know better you are a seafarer i mean there are fumes coming off of this shit like this is i mean this cause the water itself is what's causing the mutations in people yes essence and all of that but this is this is some, I mean, it's polluted as hell. So well, you- My seafarer background made me start with three strain. So um, <laughs> that must be, <laughs> that must be that, something I knew about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you you can do it. I There There is a mechanic for it and I I, I didn't plan on that. So I mean, yeah, forgot, just take another- So I uh, <laughs> guess I'm in this water now. <laughs> I mean, she's all hot. She's all hot up on chaos right now. So yes, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like I can make it negate the effects. I feel like I can overpower it in a way I never had before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so I, I, I'm really nice. Pupils are like, bing. You, yeah. You're not gonna. You're not going to die from going into the water. But there are fumes and gases um, above the water, and that actually is what is the most dangerous. Oh Still, God. you die. You dove in. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you get really close to one and, and, and yeah, I think you'd be able to uh, screw it. You're, you're able to grab, um, a, um, uh, a leg, but, <laughs> but you're going to have to take a strain for now. That makes sense. <laughs> Just for being inside the water. Okay. So what, what, it, what was the action that you wanted to do? The attack? Uh, I want to, after I get to the leg, I'm going to grab onto it. I'm going to grab my harpoon and just stab. Okay, I'll let you actually, instead of stabbing it, I'll let you grab it. That that counts as one action. So this is going to be a strength check versus the versus the creature's um, uh, versus the creature's strength or agility. So let's see what I want that to be. I want you to have to battle its strength, which is 15. So you're in the water, you're underneath, that's a total sneak attack, so that's a boon, but you are dealing with the the storm, so that's two bangs. But under the water, I, I thought I wouldn't feel the rain and the wind. Ah. Uh, yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. Storms don't go underwater. That's actually, that's actually true. It's not underwater. Yeah, the is, yeah, there's no wind underwater. Okay, fine, Becca. Um, so, <laughs> so you get a boon for the sneak attack and uh, another than that, you're trying to get a uh, 15 or higher. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to roll. Uh, my strength is 11, so I get a plus one. Okay, I rolled a 10, so that plus one from my strength is 11. Sorry, let me turn my volume down. Uh, and then I had a six for one of my boons. So that's going to be a 17. 17, okay. Uh, this this uh, creature is grabbed on its leg. And that means, uh, let's see, the creature's size is technically bigger than yours. If it moves, you're going to be moved with it. Um, but it's gonna, it's actually gonna be, it's gonna be more difficult for it to move. That being said, it's, it's the creature's turn. So the water striders, um, use their front, use their front kind of, uh, antenna to, uh, row themselves forward. And as they move forward, Pyrus, they do get closer to you and close enough for you to take a medium range shot. Cool. So, um, I first see Sonia do that dive thing and then land on top of it. I'm like, Huh. And then I see Gira jump off the top of the ship <laughs> into the water, and I'm like, huh. <laughs> and then I turn, I turn and aim for the middle one, and I'm going to use my last seeker point to uh, power the cannon and fire at the one in the middle. Okay, perfect. So that's the one I'm on or not the one I'm on? Not the one I'm on. Well, Great. which one did you target, actually, Becca? I didn't ask you that. Far left. Okay, Nira is left. Uh, we've got Sonia doing work on the right. And then, yeah, Pyrus, I guess you could go for the center one. Yeah, I'm going to shoot for the center one. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's see if you do uh, two Banes because the storm does occur above water. Um, and let's see. But the yep. uh, Thorn Cannon gets two boons when it comes within medium range. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> you can't keep us, Keeper Amy. You can't keep us. <laughs> okay, okay. I love it. Go, go ahead and try to hit this thing. The defense, right. you're trying to get 12 or higher. 
I got six. Six. You okay? You also you, you've been you've been impressed and also depressed with your uh, <laughs> with your partners and your and your secret mates um, attacks, and they they've just kind of challenged you enough where you're just not sure with the aim. This thorn cannon is a little bit hefty for you. You haven't really worked with it all that much, and you aim wide. Now the water strider striders are on top of you. They're going to move forward, Becca. That means uh, Nira. That means that one of them is moving forward with you they stop at the water line they you can tell they do not want to get on this on the on the uh onto the shore um but that's that's not going to stop one of them actually both of them from moving on their friend who is uh targeting or actually sorry the center one moved forward the that that was why Pyrus was able to shoot it, but this uh, the one uh, the center one tries to tries to swipe at at you guys on 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 the beach. I don't know if he'll be able to reach you, but let's see. With the stunty arm forward arms. Yeah, it, it. I I I really don't think he'll be able to reach you. Okay, let's see. Okay. I was gonna say if I roll, if I didn't, okay, if I didn't roll high enough, he wouldn't be able to hit you. But he got he got a, a seventeen plus he got a twenty two. So he's targeting. He's gonna be targeting Onyx. Are you inside the ship? I was, but in, whenever it's my round, I'm gonna. You're not it. gonna do it. Okay, so he's trying to slap over at. Um, but yeah, I'm inside the ship. Okay, slap at Pyrus then. So Pyrus, I think a twenty-two will hit your defense, um, and and he's just using this. Uh, it looks like it looks like a Swiffer mat, um, and it is covered. It is covered in hair, and it, it's like a dirty Swiffer mat, right? So it's already been swept and it's wet, and it's slapping at you, and it will do. Uh, 11 damage to you. <laughs> oh, damage snap. You. Now, the Some one Swiffer, <laughs> that's got to be a wet jet right there. <laughs> the one under the water, I mean, this is going to be a really, really, the one under the water has to roll with two banes to be released from the grapple, uh, from being grabbed. So, uh, as a, um, as yeah. a, uh, uh, what is it? Reaction, not reaction. A triggered, triggered action. action? Yeah. Can I, is, since I'm still in the bubble, would I be able to exhaust it, or would that yes. wouldn't work? Yes, okay. you would. Yes, cool. it's a melee attack. Yes, absolutely. Cool. All right. So then I'll go ahead and roll against its strength. I love it. Fifteen. Um, with a uh, what is my strength? It's a thirteen. So that's a three. Nope, that's a twelve. Never mind. Oh. Oh, okay. One day, one day, the exhaust will work. <laughs> um. That's a perfect use of that, though. So, Satin, where this one, this one guy on the right, he's gonna try to lift himself from the water. It's gonna be really tough. So he's rolling with two banes. Also, you're on top of him. Um, can I can yeah. I react to it as like, you know, that primal urge of like I need to keep you down. Like I'm I'm like a cat on on its prey and just like amazing. So I'm like yes. Yeah. Yes, is uh, is is primal urge? It, you, it's your. I don't know. I just made. I just said the words because it felt good. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Though you do have oh. this essence bond uh, talent. You do. It's called primal vigor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you can do it. You can do it only once per day, unless you use a speaker <laughs> point to use it. But you can. Oh. Well, well yay. it sounds good. Yeah, it does sound but, good, but it all, but it makes it makes you stronger. It doesn't necessarily weaken someone can, else. Okay, okay. So yeah, but I do love this idea. Stronger, it's telling. Mm -hmm. And I oh. use it to make them weaker. <laughs> um, I just love where this is going. So yeah, your primal vigor somehow makes you way more right now. It's, uh, you're making you're using your essence. That's what I wanted to. <laughs> you want to what? I want to punch it in the back of the head to kind of like it's like gonna try to get up and i'm just like yeah <laughs> oh okay okay cool so yeah, let's see it. let's see first if it moves because then then it would actually trigger you trigger you so it uh it got a 10 unfortunately so that's minus five um 
Yeah, well, I guess it's trying to move out of your melee range and I know you really want to hit it. So yeah, sock it. It <laughs> technically got a five to lift itself above the water. So it's not going anywhere, um, but you can tell that it's trying to. Are you going to attack one of the legs or it's actual uh, chitinous body? I want to go into the carcass, right? So <laughs> I wanna, like, yeah, I basically want to start, try to like punch through like they would do in like Starship Troopers, you know, just like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if you hit. Okay. Do I get any boons? Uh, you don't get any. Well, you are technically grabbing it, so I'll give you one boon. But you're still uh, the the storm's raging, so two banes because it, uh, its chitin is very slippery. Okay, so I get nothing. So, so one, sorry, one bane. Okay. Okay, so that's a twelve on the dice. Twelve is what you needed. Yeah. Oh wait, but you got a. Bane. Oh wait a minute, but I got a two <laughs> on the bane. Okay, so ten. So yeah, you you punch it, but your hand just like slips off of its uh, surface. Um, so that's what that guy did. The the last one to attack is going to come for you, and it's got mandibles. So at the front of its beetle beetle body, it's got mandibles, and it's going to try to bite you and technically try to poison you. So this. Let's see, so this is plus oh, no. five, and it does have, it, it also has to fight with two Banes. Um, but it got an 18, so minus four, minus, plus, plus five, but minus four, so that's still 19. So 19 will, I think, hit you. It's going to do seven points of damage to you, and, and you're now poisoned. So, I have this sick land I can give her. Yeah, you do. Poisoned, you make all attack and challenges <laughs> with one bane, um, and that is because you just feel weaker. Everything about you is weaker. Um, you know that your teammates, your secret mates, have ways to heal you, but for now, in this combat, you're at a disadvantage. Uh, that's uh, the poor yeah. Palm is just like nudging you. Like, no, Mom, Mom. Mm. But I have, prim well, I guess I already used my primal vigor, didn't I? Um, yes, and you can use that once a day or using a seeker point. Um, oh. Yeah, you can use a seeker point to use that. I The one thing I haven't really rolled for, he the, the one under the water is trying to get out of the water, but he's going to take 1d6 of damage every single time he's under the water because he technically is drowning and it's not his preferred way of being. So, all right, he takes another two damage. Um, we're back at the top of the round. Who's taking fast actions? I, I have a question though. I, I took 11 on top of what I already had of damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a 19. Uh, yeah, so I, I had a 15 health. Yay! <laughs> oh, no. Amy, that's evil. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's the thing about Asunder. You don't have to fight the monsters. You can run away. Um, you did find a good way to incapacitate them, but boy, did they find a good way to incapacitate. Yeah. Okay, so this is how this works. You are not dead. You are, if, it, if you were a creature, you would be dead for, I think, like 1d6 hours. Um, um, and then in that time, if you were ever healed, it'd be okay. But... Uh, but you are not a creature. You are a player character. So it's a little harder to actually kill you, but not that much harder. So um, let's give me one second. Death. That's what I'm looking for. So you are now disabled. Mm. Um, disabled characters do, do, do. you you technically can't take a turn you you go prone and you are on top of this you are still <laughs> what's ironic is your your dead body is still weighing down this water sprayer in, in the water um, <laughs> So ultimate irony, but there is another water strider above you trying to eat you. So you next turn, this this upcoming turn, the turn that we're on, making fate rolls. Um, disabled characters are defenseless. So everything I said about that character, the creature under the water is true for you. So your defense is five. I got a cat. <laughs> you do. Wild. 
Yes, you do. <laughs> okay, so you Ooh, would would Palm have the agency to, to fly her back to shore? We'll we'll have to see. Perhaps. So this turn, let's see. This is at the end of each round, so we'll do fast actions, slow actions, and then you'll have to make what's called okay. a fate roll. Mm -hmm. You need to make three evens before you roll three odds. A six is really great. A one is really bad. And you'll be rolling a D6. Oh, no. Well, I want to make a fast action. Okay. Uh, fast so action. I, I never returned Sonia's uh, knife that she, that bone knife that we got from Naga in our last oh, adventure. Oh, yes. Yeah, because I used it to dig into the worm um, and find that shard. And so I think that's on me. And I almost reach for my harpoon, but then I realize it's way too unwieldy for this melee attack. It's a better ranged weapon. So I, I grab the knife off my thigh and start just sawing and chopping into this leg that I'm clutching as I move along with it. Yes. Okay, awesome. So you are... Uh, yeah, I'll say I'll say since you're still in the water, you don't have the bands from the storm. Um, you do. You are still in the water, so you take one more strain. Uh, being in the water is not great. Um, so go ahead and take uh, do your yeah, make your attack. Okay. Um, and then maybe no, this would be for a future round, but I'd like to take an uh, part of my or maybe my my um, trigger action to start uh, like climbing up the leg a little bit. Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, so, so that, that would I can be out of the water. Um, something would have to trigger it, that in order for you to be able to Don't do Don't worry that. about it. I'll just take the strain. Yeah, I like it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. If you want to move to climb, I, 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 that's definitely possible, but you have just to take it a, a slower, slower action. action. Yep. Let's do it as a slow action so I don't have to take the strain because I'm at six. Oh, don't you want that strain though? That strain? <laughs> I wonder, am I worried about okay. hitting with strain? You know, but we, we must show the audience how this game works. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have nefarious <laughs> plans. Uh, fine, who's taking fast actions? Uh, I would like to, yeah. Yeah, okay. You have I don't one... know if this is going to be faster than that, though. Yeah, you have one. You have one guy, one water strider within your reach, within your range for your bow. Well, uh, what I wanted to do is I want to leap very wow. high, and whatever's the one that's trying to get into Sonia. Um, yeah. So I want to leap off the ship, come yeah. down with my. Glass bladed axe. Ooh. Um, and just oh, right that's... center point into the dome. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So tell everybody what what allows you to just be able to take a leap that Sonia needed a flying jaguar in order to take. <laughs> well, I'm bonded with the Blyce crystal, means I can def I can manipulate gravity. Um I also have lighter than air, so which air for who aren't aware. Hey, how about that? Um, it, hang on, I'm just gonna pull it up on my little chart. I can leap great distances, dozens or even hundreds of feet at a time. Whenever I jump or across, multiply the distance you can by ten, and distance you jump by ten. And when you drop down from a height, you can fall 30 yards without taking damage. And in addition, whenever you make a challenge roll involves jumping or climbing, you do so with one boon. And there's some, yeah, that's that. Okay. A secret point would make me jump further, but I don't think I need to jump that far. No, you can get there. So you can yeah. get there. Um, you're doing it right in the storm. So that's still two banes, but your lighter than air gives you a boon. So that's only one bane. I feel like I'm least equipped for this sort of combat. <laughs> but Becca, I don't think you've done any expert advice this round. Oh, we're in a new round because I did give it to Sonia, but that was last round. That was last round. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> this one, it sucks. As I have the two <laughs> It sucks? Shimmy. It sucks. Go for this one. I got it. <laughs> I heard you say. 
<laughs> and, and on top of that, I'm just going to say this is this is going to Onyx. You can seize the advantage, which is I was going to ask you, can I stack those? I didn't know. I mean, I guess yeah, you can stack just those. Okay. It, yeah. <laughs> well, you, oh, I, I see what you're saying because lighter than air is a talent a, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I still I, I want you to make this roll with one boon because you've already seen your friend do exactly this. Yeah. using her animal but you just have this innate ability to do it um yeah. and uh maybe maybe flip just because that's what onyx does is just for flair oh boy okay yeah <laughs> okay so make this attack roll with a boon done uh wait can I can I seek a point like a reroll or do you do you do that? <laughs> uh oh. Uh, seek a point a real roll. Um, you can seek a point. A yeah, sure, whatever. Sure. I don't think this is a, <laughs> I don't I don't think this is a real dice. Yay! That's so much yeah. cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> like, my brain's broken at this point. That's an 18. Um, yeah. Much better. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you were going for a 12, and I, I and I and I do want to see, yeah. I do want to see gonna, this work out. And the so tell, tell us what it looks like, Onyx, as as you just from nothing. You're just standing there. You kind of jump, but so I'm at the edge of my, you know, I've got my my DeLorean doors. Um, so I'm standing at the edge of this the ship. I'm looking around. I see this going down. I see Sonia. And I'm just remembering the moment that we really, that we all, that we shared together uh, just about the night before, you know, and I just say, you know, I, I can't let this happen. So I take a deep breath, remember what my grandfather taught me and just leap and go up maybe, I don't know, 50 feet in the air, do a, grab my glass bladed ax as I'm flipping down and just come right on the top of that beetle. Yeah, you totally totally do and you it went he was here on the water now under the water um same as the other one it's now it's now defenseless but it's a glass bladed axe so i mean that's pretty axe. hardcore yeah i want you to do damage as well as you as you swing the blade down on top of this thing okay and that's it's gonna be is it 1d6 or just two or it's a glass and deadly so that would be Ooh. um Ooh, deadly's a plus two, I think, mm -hmm. after the roll. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Plus two oh, yeah. plus two damage on uh, after the roll? I believe yeah, so. That's what my deadly harpoon got its plus two for. Yeah. Yeah. Glass deals what glass weapon deals one D six extra damage. Ooh. And deadly is uh Light melee weapons deal, okay, uh, plus two damage for deadly. Or a heavy melee weapon is a extra 1d6. Oh and I think God. that's the one because I can manipulate gravity it's, and I can carry um, heavier weapons. Awesome. So right. how, yeah, that would make Three a lot of sense. Six? How many d6s are you rolling? I, I, is that, that's Three. a Three. <laughs> Three. Three d6s. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, you're going down. You suck. <laughs> My Nira said you suck. You did the thing. Okay. <laughs> and that roll was terrible. No. Oh. Yeah, two ones and a two, so it'd be four. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, so much potential. It's okay. because of the flip. You know, Onyx just <laughs> has to like go. Oh, over the top. Yeah. Yeah, you lost some of the momentum. So what's that? Yeah. Four damage, but plus two, right? So six damage? Yeah. Six damage. Okay, awesome. But this this water strider is totally uh, totally submerged and defenseless underwater. So there's really only one water strider still above the water and able to attack. And uh, and then there there's one there there are two underwater, and then one of your compatriots is down. So that actually sorry that was technically a slow turn because you moved and did an action. But did anyone want to take a fast action? I did. Yes, Pyrus. Yeah, I just uh, I just wanted to fire at the one that's kind of <laughs> swiffering me. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Yes, uh, go ahead and, and and are you using the thorn cannon? I'm going to take a strain and I'm going to use the thorn cannon on this okay. guy at point 
point blank. Yeah, the way that works is you you've you've attached yourself to it. It's got like three vines, and you take it and you shove it. Where do you shove it? In your arm? In your chest? Yeah, uh, like uh, the and right in the ribs. Yeah, right in the oh, perfect. Okay, and you you scream. You love this. It 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 it, <laughs> it takes everything for. There's no way to remember your past anymore because it hurts so much. Mm. Perfect. You think. Yep. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, make an attack with the thorn thorn cannon. Uh, the that, boons cancel out the banes. So that is a twenty three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, awesome. Yes, you obliterate this thing. How much damage does that do? Uh, it does four d six, I believe. Yep, four d six. No onyx roll. Oh, almost. Oh, that was good and bad. Uh, the five, four, one, one. So that is a total of 11. Yeah. 11 points. Oh. 11. Amazing. Okay. So it's still, it's still quite a bit. So, uh, you hit it. I mean, the way the thorn cannon works is it's an explosion of kind of plant organic shrapnel. Um, and it goes straight into it. it hits, it hits it from all sides. It hits some on its legs, some on its carapace, uh, every it's hitting it from everywhere. So it, it, you see some indentions inside of it. Um, one is lodged, one little thorn is lodged in its eye and, it, but it, it's still, it's still standing up and trying to go for you. Um, okay. um yeah? then as a, uh, what is it? As a triggered action, I want to shake off some of the damage that I took last round. Okay. Healing five, so bringing me to six, and that's the end of my turn. Okay, perfect. So who was... Nira, were you I, waiting to take seven? I was waiting, and then I know Sonya's in trouble. But you know what? I see that Onyx has basically downed this creature that I'm on, and it gives me a moment while in this toxic water to look around and see my friend, my companion in need and, and not conscious. And so I want to uh, maneuver, uh, pull myself on on that downed beetle up on top because I believe Sonya's still on top of that first beetle. And yes. I want to perform my action, which is called, oh, are you ready for this? It's called on your feet. I'm going to heal myself and my ally um, to wow. choose an ally within medium range, and they get to heal damage equal to their healing rate. I get to use it for free, um, but if I want to use it again, I have to use a secret point, and I can refresh that when I when I rest. So it's not per um, round. It's okay. just the once. Perfect. So this round isn't even over. You have had to make zero fate rolls, unfortunately, so the audience can't see how someone <laughs> so dies. sorry. But, but Sonia, uh, what is your health and your healing rate? My health is 15. My, so my healing rate is, oh, I didn't calculate Do that. round right? up or down? Three. Okay. Yeah, I think you round down. Okay. Um, so it's three. And okay. uh, yeah, you get three. Uh, you get to take away three damage. Okay. Um, and as I, yeah. as I crawl up the side of that beetle, I pull myself up and I say, on your feet. And then I take a moment to really relax outside of this water. And I realize getting in there was probably a very bad idea to begin with. Yes. Oh, yes. Amazing. Take a little rest. But we're here together on this beetle. Out. And I reach out for your hand. So Nira, yep. though, Nira, though, because you were waiting for your slow action to get out of the water. But instead, you waited for your slow action to actually swim across the water. So take one more string. Okay. Uh -huh. So okay. that puts me at seven, which is um, really close. Half of my health. I don't know if that matters. Uh, strain. Strain is more for. I think it's your will that we're looking. Mm -hmm. to That's meet. right. Yeah. It is more than half my will. <clears throat> What's your will? Twelve. How close are we? <laughs> okay, we're oh, close. Wow. All right, a new goal for me. Um, okay, perfect. So now these uh, these two underwater, they're gonna ha they're they're just not gonna they're defenseless. Oh look, I'm gonna say, yeah, they would have to roll super high. They're rolling with two bayons um, to become ungrappled by the water, and unfortunately, there are two each. One of them has one seeker, Onyx, on top of him, and uh, who can manipulate gravity and probably just use gravity to push himself further on top mm. of on top of the water strider. And the other water strider has mm. now two seekers on top of it. Uh, so there's just no way that these seekers are going to get up unless I, you know, legit rolled a twenty on the die. However, there is still one 
a water strider who was able, who was, who was absolutely furious and he just got shrapneled with thorns. <laughs> so he's going to, he, he's not going to venture on land yet, but he doesn't have to in order to take his big, uh, dirty Swiffer pads and trying to attack Pyrus. Um, Bring it on. Uh, Pyrus, here we go. No, I rolled a one on the die. <laughs> <laughs> what did I six? Would a six? Would a six hit you? No. Okay. A six? No. Okay. So end of end of that turn. Again, this is around. This is when Satine would roll a fate roll. I just want to see what you would roll. Satine, will you roll a d six real quick? One d six or a three d six? One d six. Okay. Three. A three. A three would technically, you don't have to worry about this. I'm, I was just curious, but a three would technically be um, one tally on the death march. And you oh remember, you need three evens before you get three odds and you have one roll of a d6 Woo! per turn. So you're lucky that everyone was, was nearby. Um, we're back at the top of the round. Who's taking Who's taking a fast act? Oh wait, I need to roll damage for these guys. Uh, the, yeah, they're not. I don't know if this is an action or what this is, but I want to respond to what Nira did with my conscripted soldier. Okay. When I was in the military. I was trained to be an assassin. I chose Nira to be, you know, the the person that I follow. So I don't know if that lets me do anything, but I feel like it, it's inspiring somehow. Ooh, I love it. Yes, it, it for sure is inspiring. So you- oh, uh, I feel a, a total lack of strain when you say those words. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> you guys are taking away all the fun toys that I have, so um, I have to have I have to have something to play with. The gods have chaos. It's what do I have? I have strength. Discord. Um, no, you're conscripted soldier. So that's a new. Uh, sorry, new that's thing. a new profession, right? Yes. Okay, so new profession. I'll let you. Um, can I go when she goes to kind of amplify whatever she's doing? Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, if you, yeah, if it's coordinated, yeah, I, I would let you get, uh, how about if you, if you two work together on an attack, I will give one of you two boons to make an attack. And then on top of that, you can do another D6. But ideally, Satine, that would be you because you're... Yeah. You're coordinating it. Awesome. Yeah, we do our special arm signal where we like grab forearms in this coordinated way. It's like better than a handshake. Uh, yeah. as, as I lift her up and heal her, and then I give her the order to take the lead, and I will just do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm so the, very bad one, at actually doing the work of battle, but I'm great at inspiring people. <laughs> is the one that so the one that we're on is pretty done? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it would take a lot for it to it would it would really have to get above water. It's slowly drowning right now. So yeah, oh, good. So good. that's good. Mm -hmm. um, should I kill it? Mm -hmm. oh, should I try to kill yeah. it? I think the, it's incapacitated. We're on it, but there's yeah, the, on top of, Iris on top is the one that's still trouble, right? Yeah, Onyx, you're on one. Sonia and Nira are on the other. Okay. Um, they're they're everybody is is slowly dying except the one that's fighting Pyrus. Okay, so then we're gonna we're I'm gonna. How close are we? Can I jump on that one to the one that's attacking Pyrus? Well, we have Palm. Ooh, you could fly over there or swim over there, but yeah. The, the the two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to get that one underwater too. I get that one underwater Maybe too. Oh, you could swim. <laughs> could, okay. I take a fast, could I take a fast action before they do that? Maybe yes, because that technically would be a move. Yeah, what's up, Pyrus? Uh, I just I want to take one more strain as like the beads of sweat are like dripping down my face and yeah. I just want to fire right back into this guy's face. Oh, I love it when you take strain on your <laughs> own. Yes. <laughs> what is your strain at now? Uh, my strain at now is I only have two. I only have two strain. Oh. Must be nice. So uh, I rolled a uh, <laughs> uh, twelve. It's uh, uh, eight plus four. Yeah, a, a uh, twelve, a, a twelve would do it. Oh, 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 oh okay. 
<laughs> ah! Ooh, that's a that's a much nicer. Nope, nope, that's about the same. Uh, that is 12, four, uh, 14, 14 nice. damage. Okay, this guy. Oh, okay, awesome. All right, so this is worse. This guy's worse for the wear. You, you, you throw the the organic shrapnel at him one more time. It blasts forth. Uh, it totally sinks. Uh, one eye is totally gone. Um, its carapace is riddled with thorns, and and its uh, let's say its back leg is uh, disheveled. So now it is. It's it's. I guess its butt is resting in the water. Um, and, but it's, you can tell it still doesn't want to come on land. So you, you wrecked it pretty heavily. It's almost, it's almost totally down. It looks shaky at, at least, um, but you haven't quite killed it. So uh, I guess Onyx and uh, let's see this coordinated attack, this slower action. So how, how are you coordinating uh, this setting? Um, I'm gonna. I'm like pr prone. I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting down. Nira kind of pulls me up, calls over Palm, and I do like a running thing, and I leap on Palm's back, who's kind of like already flying, and so Amazing. I'm like yeah. running across Palm, and, and then I leap up as Palm is like flying, and I jump on that back, and I hit it with my big nasty bone hammer. Okay, cool. And since um, since that's a coordinated attack. And Becca is helping you. Uh, sh you can have one boon um, to attack. Again, the storm's still raging. It's slippery. Mm -hmm. You're being tossed around, so that's two bane. So you right now have one bane to make this attack. Okay. Twelve. That's all you need. All right. Finish it off. <laughs> 10 points of damage. Whoa. Damn. <laughs> yeah, Damn. okay. I, I still have the, um, do I still have that, my beast aspect going? Or did it go out when I went No, I out? think beast aspect does last, I think it lasts a while. Cool. I think it, but yeah, that's the number. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so you do, you do kill it. But I want you to describe it to me. Let me tell you what the situations are. It's raining, storming, lightning. This this water bug, this water strider does not want to be on the beach. It doesn't want to be on the sand. It wants to be on the water. That being said, it was trying to attack Pyra, so it's pretty close to the shore. Who knows how much water is beneath it, but probably not much. So describe what it's like when your flying cat drops you out of the sky on top of it. Well, it's obviously <laughs> time, right? And there's like lightning in the air. And I'm just, we're both like this like onyx and I've got my bronze and then the lightning goes <laughs> and it just like cascades down my wet skin. And I'm just like running in the air and I'm like, Hah! and then I just slam down and, and I just don't even stop. My, my feet land and I just keep going and I'm just like yes. I'm so into it and just <laughs> yeah it kind of explodes it splits into two weird weird goopy uh yellow stuff seeps out and it blends right in with the noxious gas gases that are floating above the water in the sea um and before it starts to before the tide the the stormy tide takes it out you step off victorious onto the beach um mm -hmm. The rest, the, so the tight. yeah, the rest of the, <laughs> the rest of the water striders are slowly, slowly drowning in the ocean. And that is, that is where we'll stop for this evening. Yay! <laughs> oh, I, do, I do have to remind you that part of a sunder is, is throwing monsters at you that are, a little that are higher than your difficulty, um, <laughs> higher than you should be able to to fight because in a sunder in this dark world, running away is not it's not for it's not for the strong of heart. It's not for the weak of heart. It's kind of just a normal thing that that happens. Uh, we'll learn not... our lesson soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> But you did, I can't believe on Satine, your first, I, I mean, I, this is, so the other thing, it's worth saying on stream, but the thing about Asunder, I'm not kidding. The way that the, the way that the monsters are given to you in this, um, in the Keeper's Tome, it's basically like, 
Oh, are you looking to build a bug? Here are some basic stats. Why don't you mess with it? And then, and then, like, it's just so much fun to look up uh, like a monster in real life and say, oh, this is what the attack would be. This is what the weakness would be. But you nailed what the weakness is, which <laughs> it's, it just was so funny to me to have this like weird water strider. And then like its weakness is if you just push it down like a button. But you did it in your first attack, which is awesome. That's animal <laughs> instinct right there. Totally. So <laughs> Doing that. Thanks so Never much everybody really for this amazing <laughs> show. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for being our keeper. I just want to shout out one more time uh, that Asunder is going live on Kickstarter on November 17th. And if you type in this link or you scroll down a little bit on whatever platform you're on, there's a there's a link for you. If you'd like to just click it, uh, go to bit.ly slash Asunder RPG. And then you can be notified when the Kickstarter goes live if you want to learn more about the world of Asunder <laughs> as you can see, is a pretty involved and incredible world that we get to play around in. Um, and we will be off next week because that's election day. Please remember to vote if you haven't voted out there. Yes, Our vote everybody. Uh, there's some states where you can still register up to the day. Uh, so get out there and make your voice heard. And then we'll be back on November 10th, which is two weeks from today uh, with Morris Sunder. Yay! All right, awesome. that's it from us for tonight. Uh, anything else from our fearless keeper? Oh, our fearless keeper, y'all did great, and I wish I, I wish I could have killed you or made you have an essence frig. We'll do that soon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for you to break us. All right, yeah. take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Weapons. The world is broken. Broken by the gods who gave it life and abandoned it. We have been left to fend for ourselves, our divine essence bonding with the plants, which we reshaped into weapons, bonding with the sea, which then reshaped us. Next was the insects, and then the beasts of the land. We found remnants of the gods, chaos, the power to transform reality. But it was not meant for us to wield. The secret societies, with both noble and selfish goals, have tried to control it. Something has changed. Gaia has awoken from her slumber, and Asunder has begun to devour itself. The Naga have betrayed the Alliance. Demons flood the Black Isle, and the dead have begun to rise. Most deny the end is coming, but we've seen the signs and cannot turn back. We are the Seekers, and we will find the answers wherever they take us. Our story can be your story.